looks like we have a quorum. So I will uh, open this meeting. It is uh, 5.30 p.m. on Thursday, January 28th. And I'll start by taking a uh, roll call. Uh, Ms. Owen. Mr. Cage. Here. Ms. Ferreira. Here. Ms. Pat. Ms. Pat. Okay, just you're you're muted, can't hear you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Here. <clears throat> okay. Let me just open this up. So welcome to the working group. Welcome to uh, those of you who are also joining us in the community uh, this evening. We thank you for your presence. And uh, just gonna quickly review our agenda and get right into the work. Um, this evening, we are gonna have to re approve, uh, review and approve three sets of meeting uh, minutes. So we'll be doing that uh, right after um, this review. And then as always, we will uh, welcome any public comment from those who are uh, in the audience from the public, followed by an opportunity for any of our community safety working group members to report in on any new learnings, um, any new experiences that they're bringing to this work, uh, just to keep us up to date. And then we'll get into the action uh, and discussion items. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, and up, update on the bid contract language. This was uh, uh, the working group's uh, attempt to solicit some support for the ongoing work that the group has to do over the next few months. And uh, so we'll be, we'll be reviewing that. Uh, there is an opportunity for us to uh, discuss the defund 14 demand letter, you know, a little update on that, and we'll receive comments and thoughts from the, 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 the working group. And uh, this after action review um, is just a portion of the meeting. Uh, we're hoping to take a look at uh, the community forums, how they came out, what our next outreach initiatives and steps might be uh, including things like compensation for those who participate in surveys, uh, whether or not uh, UMass Police Department um, will be uh, involved in our in, in, in the work that we're doing, et cetera. And also the et cetera is actually the community representatives. Are we gonna take a look at and um, probably uh, seek the services of some additional help for doing the kinds of outreach we need to do in the community. And uh, this is just a suggestion about task identification in a timeline. Uh, of course, this may come up across a few items, but one of the things we'll, we hope to do is to create a tighter timeline on what we're doing when we're getting it done. So as, uh, as we start to move down toward June, and I think that's the important piece for us to, to, to work on as well beginning now. And then shared and collective experiences and resources. Uh, it's a, a topic that uh, is important to us. We do receive a lot of information from, from the community and from each other. So how to process that, how to use it, how to store it, those kinds of things we'll, we'll discuss as well. And then uh, alternative services for the uh, uh, Amherst Police Department. We'll get some thoughts from the, the working group, uh, ask some questions relative to information uh, we need to make, need to get to, to make recommendations, uh, and information we'll need to decide on what to propose. And I guess this is also tied into a lot of other items, as you probably can imagine. Um, Brianna Owen, uh, Ms. Owen, and myself. Uh, would uh, just want to make a brief statement, uh, update from the town council meeting on the 25th, and then response to emails sent to our community service safety working group, who and how often. 
And those are questions also of task assignments, et cetera, and the timing of agenda items. So we have a lot to do this evening and certainly we'll follow up with any upcoming events uh, from anyone on the, on the working group. We'll set our next meeting date. And then of course, any other topics uh, that were not reasonably anticipated will receive 48 an hours in advance of this meeting, followed by a motion to adjourn. So thank you again for all for being here. And uh, I wanna go right into public comment. And if there's someone here who has not been on our meeting, we devote some time to public comment in the beginning. We've typically devoted about 15 minutes for this to allow members of our community to speak to the group. This is a, a listening exercise for us and we, as always, intend to listen deeply and uh, respectfully to what you have to say. So we welcome that commentary now for anyone who would like to speak and uh, uh, Ms. Moyston will will recognize you and um, open you up to the meeting. Yep, at this time, no one has their hand raised. There are four um, people in the, as attendants, okay. as attendees. Thank you. We'll wait a few moments. Anyone uh, yet, Ms. Moyston? No. Okay. Well, okay, I think given that, um, and given that we have much to do this evening, I'd like to, to move forward and just open it up to the, um, the working group. Um, any opening comments, things you'd like to share uh, in our meeting with your colleagues in the community before we go forward? Um, you know, I can yes. share something. Yes, Pereira and then Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. go right ahead, Ms. Pereira. Okay. Um, one of the things too, um, Ms. Wale, I don't know if you are going to go back to where we skipped over the minutes approval. Oh, I did. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I was so busy with the agenda <laughs> item. Thank you so much. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. Yeah. But um, yeah, for me, you know, it was a busy work, uh, uh, work week for me this week. So I wasn't able to kind of do as much as I wanted to get done. Um, the thing that I kind of looked at, I'm still kind of um, looking at the Newton uh, police, ref uh, police Task Force and the committee that they have over there. Um, they had another town hall, I guess if they had three. And they have a consulting firm already working with them that kind of is helping them to kind of look at data mm -hmm. and to look at survey results and everything. So I think, again, I'm, I'm happy we're going to be looking at the bid because I think we, we desperately need um, some some assistance with that um, because based on their third uh, town hall, the, this consulting strategy matters were able to kind of really look at um, the survey questions. Um, you know, some of the things that they were able to kind of get from the community was like, you know, where the police have no role and kind of clearly delineate the areas uh, where the, the police could be like more prevent, you know, preventative and where um, they could actually respond to things, right? So no role like mental health, right? I'm just giving an example, you know, preventative possibly, you know, traffic issues um, and then respond, you know, theft, burglary, violent crime areas. I thought that that was, you know, interesting way. And then just to kind of delineate, you know, certain areas where the community was in agreement with certain things that the police could do. And then the areas of disagreement, which obviously can highlight where we as a, the, the committee could be more effective in terms of coming up with alternatives. And things like that. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. And then um, there, there was the uh, webinars that took place for the past three days uh, with community policing webinar. Unfortunately, like I said, I was really busy at work um, this week, so I was only able to get the tail end of it um, today. 
which was on kind of what's alternative practices. Um, they had some really good um, speakers, um, one especially that was really trying to delve into the history uh, of this country, um, you know, focusing on the colonial aspect of it, you know, obviously why the police were uh, created, especially around, you know, being kind of like overseers and, and police like patrols, like slave patrols back from slavery, right? Um, and, uh, and really kind of like talking about how to really focus on, on reimagining something different as opposed to just reform. So they talked a lot about that, right? Is it about reform? Is it about reimagining something different? Is it about, you know, um, focusing on, um, you know, what been done and done before? Re reform has happened, you know, for many years prior. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time that reform has been brought up. So they were really kind of talking about, you know, all those aspects um, and really thinking about, you know, if we do look at other alternatives, um, how can those other organizations or programs be successful, right? Because we're talking about also a lot of times when you do that, what happens is that um, like the police and, and folks that have the information don't give them access to that information. So then they can't be successful, right? So if you do have uh, other programs take on things that the police do right now, then there's also that thing about, you know, making sure that they're not successful. Then of course, funding resources. How can you make sure that the funding stays prolonged, is sustainable? It's not something that they, they have to fight for year to year, right? So half the time they're only focused on resources and therefore not focused on providing the service, right? So, um, so like I said, I was only able to get the tail end, but I thought there was a lot of uh, really helpful um, information here. Thank you. And uh, I know, Mr. Vernon Jones, you had your hand up. I, I don't know if you were trying to remind me as well to go back to the minutes or you had a comment you wanted to make. I, I have a brief comment, but we can do either first. I think I'd like to go back just to just keep the, the flow going the way it should have gone in the first place with the minutes. And I apologize to the group for that. Um, so um, we have three sets of minutes to uh, review and approve. And they're from the meetings of the 6th, the 11th, and the 22nd. So, um, Ms. Moisten, I just want to just a, a point of how best to do this. We have to do these one at a time. Um, I think so. You can, I think, Paul, don't you think they can, can they do all three at one time? Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I didn't want it because that's a lot of information to absorb across three. But if, it's, it can, if I can open it up to all three, then maybe we could start with commentary on the first, the second, the third, and then. Okay, so, but I have these starting with January 22nd. Yeah, let's. So I. Working backwards. There's a lot, yes, there's a lot of information in our in our meetings. And so I tried to just keep this one as simple as possible and just highlight the main points of the conversations. Um, so. Thank you. Let's, let's go right to it then. Um, any any uh, comments uh, anyone in the group would like to make relative to the 22nd, meeting of the 22nd, Ms. Ferreira? Uh, just one point to, co to correct is that for the bid revision, it was, um, uh, Miss Alicia, that was on it, not me. So that's just one, one correction. Okay. Others? No others? I think what I'm going to do, Miss Moiston and, and the group, is just go approve each one separately, mm -hmm. or that'd be easier. Mm -hmm. Other comments um, from the group on the meeting of the 22nd? Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, for that uh, direction. Mr. Vernon Jones has his hand up. I'm just seeing now, yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. I move we approve the minutes of January 22nd as amended. 
Thank you. Have a motion to approve the, uh, the minutes of the 22nd as amended. Uh, like a second, please. Second. Second, Ms. Ferreira. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Right, your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Okay, move to the next set of minutes. These minutes are the meeting meeting minutes from January 11th meeting. Same request, any comments? Ms. Ferreira. So, and it's actually like, I have the same one for this one and, and the sticks. Um, just one, one quick correction. Um, for the opening statement, it was um, Mr. Wiley, um, Ms. Walker and myself that worked on it. Mm -hmm. So I was left out. I'm and so sorry. For the, for the six also is the same one, just so you know. Like this, I don't have to say it again. <laughs> but thanks. Thank you for that, that correction. Thank you. Other comments, corrections? Hearing none, I welcome a motion to um, approve the minutes of the 11th as amended. So move. Mr. Vernon Jones, thank you. Um, Seconded. Ms. Owen, thank you. Those in favor? Um. Okay. Aye. All right, thank you. Got everybody there. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Welcome. Yes. Uh, and now the minutes of the 6th of January. <laughs> and I think Ms. Ferreira, you said there was a continuing. Yeah, just a, yeah, just a small change. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the six yeah. Of one. <clears throat> Thanks, Ms. Moyston. And the notes are incredible, just to kind of make sure you know that. <laughs> Thanks. And so these both are being approved as amended, correct? Because I think yes, you guys skipped amended. that out of the 11th minutes from the 11th. There are no other uh, comments, corrections? Can you keep scrolling? Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have one correction. Yes, Ms. Pat. So where it says um, Ms. Pat looked at material and felt overwhelmed. Uh, can overwhelm be changed concern? Do you know what I'm talking about? Where is that again? It says I remember it in oh, conversation. Yeah, yeah, One, two, three, four. Okay. Yes. Overwhelmed. Uh, change to concern. Sure. Thank you. And as we're thinking about this, thank you, uh, Ms. Pat, for you know asking. To, to scroll down and some of these things that we have are, are fairly lengthy. And even though we may have in front of us, even for the public, it's good for everyone to be able to see them. So if you have a, a, have a need to scroll up or down, you know, please feel free to, to say so. And thank you Ms. Moisson again for doing this yeah. echoing um, earlier comment. Any other comments, uh, corrections to the meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I really like the minutes. It's very simple, straightforward, not so heavy. Yes. So, Ms. Moisten, thank you very much. You're welcome. Really good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I almost feel like I want to make a motion to to like Ms. Moisten, but I, <laughs> I don't think we need to do that. I'll second that one. Oh, okay, so All I, in favor. I just don't want her to get a big head here. So. Aye. 
Okay, yeah, all, all done. So let's go to the minutes. So uh, I'd welcome a motion to approve the minutes of the six. As amended. As amended, yes. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Pat. A second? Second. Those in favor? Put your hand, I can see you. Thank you, unanimous. Thank you so much. And again, Aye. for um, getting out of order there. I'd like to go immediately back to uh, you, Mr. Vernon Jones, in the uh, uh, working group comment. Uh, I, I just wanted to say I got to go to the first day of the, that series of webinars and uh, found it very interesting. A lot of good background and perspective. Um, and I finally got to read the Northampton Task Force uh, preliminary report. Uh, and I'm very impressed with what they're doing. I think there's a lot we can, can learn from uh, and maybe even use ourselves. Uh, and I really want to appreciate Judy Glazer who sent us today some notes on a community responder uh, report. The, the notes were uh, <clears throat> concise and helpful and the report looks like it may be very useful to us in the long run. Um, if we're not speaking, can we mute? I'm hearing like background noise. I think we're good now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Other other comments or offerings from, from the working group? Ms. Pat. So I actually attended the three um, uh, webinar uh, that uh, Ms. Allegra has sent to us. Lots of information from academic uh, perspective, as well as uh, people with lived experiences share their thoughts. I think for me personally, instead of repeat, you know, trying to explain everything I understood on, on those three webinar, it will it will inform me and help me when we start uh, recommending alternative programs. I, it is very powerful, very robust um, uh, webinar, very, very um, informative and educational for me personally. That's all I want to say. I also want to thank uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Bridget Hines, is that her last name? That sent us an email, um, you know, one in the, uh, just want to encourage all the um, resident community members to keep sending emails and their feedback. You know, we appreciate all of all of all of you. That's what I want to say. I'm done. I'm done. Paul, you're muted. I'm muted again. No, I'm muted. Oh, okay. I'm oh. muted. Okay. Thank you. I um, thank you, uh, everyone. I also want to just offer that um, I happen to, uh, in addition to reviewing some of the the things that you all spoke to, uh, I had an opportunity to read through a, a a publication called "What Works in Community Policing" that came out of University of California, Berkeley. Uh, in the uh, it's in the Warren Institute of Law and Social Policy, and I will I will share that uh, going forward as another resource for the group. Some interesting pieces of information in there. Some some things that might offer some good guidance in addition to the other information that we're receiving, you know, within the group, sharing each other and from our community. So uh, it's it's really to me kind of stunning how there are so many similarities in terms of uh, things that people are looking into and studying and questioning of, across towns and cities all over the United States relative to the police departments. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, as we start to, you know, go through this information, you know, we can also be into kind of collate it a bit and see where thematically we can go uh, to provide some focus and useful information for Amherst Police Department. So. Anyway, just, just one other thing to add to the, the group. Okay. If there are no others, thank you all for your contributions, your extra work beyond the meetings is always appreciated by everyone. 
and I'll go right to the um, update on bid contract language. I know uh, we sent some information out uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. We got some information back, certainly from um, Mr. Bockelman in terms of uh, the proposal. And then there was some feedback on it, which is here today in a revised version. So I'd like to just open it to the, the folks who are working on that to um, to, to comment if they like. Mr. Bachman certainly comment on it as, as you need to. But uh, let me start with the with the working group and uh, see if there's anything you want to lead off with on, on this discussion. Mr. Rush, you want to start? Oh, I thought I was hoping you would start. Oh, you start. You go ahead. Start. I'll follow you. <laughs> well, Ms. Pat and Alicia and I uh, all looked at this and um, sent in various uh, suggested revisions. Uh, and I think the document you have now incorporates the input of all three of us. Uh, and it may still need some tweaking uh, to be workable, but um, I think we, uh, I think we found ourselves in agreement uh, about some of the uh, revisions that we recommend. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Well said. Um, we did not do anything on the dates, um, the timeline. We we left those um, for the group to to discuss. Uh, the town manager. <clears throat> Other comments? Mr. Bachman. Uh, thank you. So um, this, yeah, I think this is, you've done really good work on this. Um, there's still, um, it's still a very, what I had started with was very large and it's Still pretty big. Um, our procurement officer is in the audience, so um, if there are technical things, there's a couple things that he identified that I'd like to identify, bring to your attention as well. Um, the sense, in general, uh, the still question is if we're going to do an invitation for bid for an R versus an RFP. And um, and oh, Jennifer's bringing him in. This is Anthony Delaney, where it says accounting department. Um, so the the. And we, we don't need to get into the details, except that the invitation for bid is much faster. It can be turned around in a week, but you have to take the low bid. The RFP is a more complex process that requires us to establish cr criteria on how we're going to make our decision and cr have different sort of categories on how you're going to rate everyone. Um, the, there are some terms um, that need to be defined, which is just sort of a technical thing. like. Um, when we say anti-racist work, what does that really mean? We just need to get a little more definition in that, which I think is easily done. Um, and um, and those are, I think, are the big ones. Um, and if I if I could defer to uh, Mr. Chair to Mr. Delaney, if that's okay, he can comment a little bit more. I mean, I think he knows that our mission here is to get this out as soon as possible and to get a consultant on board. Mm -hmm. uh, to help with the key components of the working group's work. Um, uh, it's just an enormous task, so it's... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, certainly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bachman. Thanks, um, thank um, you. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, and yes, welcome, Mr. Delaney. Um, why don't we let you open up with a comment and see if we have any questions or comments from the group. Uh, so... There, uh, I'm not sure exactly where to start. I, I think I would say uh, it's uh, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, my bi the, the biggest thing that needs work is your comparative evaluation criteria. If this is being done as an RFP, uh, the state law mandates that the RFP have comparative evaluation criteria that are spelled out. Uh, it's not exactly a grading rubric, but rather We'll be looking at the quality of the proposal and a very good proposal will have characteristics X, Y, and Z and a good proposal will have characteristics X and Y and an unacceptable proposal will have only characteristic X, say. Uh, and I can, uh, we're, uh, working with 
a delegate from this committee or the entire committee, or whatever format you deem most appropriate, but we can workshop those. Um, that is the only required element that is is missing from the document as I saw it this afternoon. Uh, there's there's other little things that I probably want to expand or get clarification on, but uh, that's where I would start. Thank you and appreciate you, your being here. Mr. Vernon Jones. There was another Mr. issue that, that Ms. Pat raised mm -hmm. and that was whether there are really two different sets of expertise we want for different parts of this work mm -hmm. uh, where one might be really important to have someone with lived experience um, of being targeted by racism or uh, working in a town you know, somewhat similar to Amherst uh, and might even <clears throat> be open to some local people. Uh, and then there's some other things about collective bargaining and evaluation of statistics and uh, legal issues uh, that, that might bring very different candidates. And so the question was whether we wanted to split it into two different proposals uh, so that we could you know, have one kind of candidate for one part of it and another kind for another part, uh, or whether if we keep it together, then I assume we would be hoping that there might be some teams that would apply that would have a variety of uh, expertise. But uh, we, we did not resolve that issue on our subcommittee, but wanted to raise it for everyone and uh, really invite people to look at the possibility of dividing it into two different proposals. Uh, Ms. Pat, is there more you wanted to say about that? You basically um, said it very well. So my, our thinking about you know, splitting the project is um, for big consulting firm, they will just take up the whole project and they may not necessarily, they, the management may not be a person who have a lived experience about the, you know, about the project. So I have, you know, I have concern about that. And we feel, we feel that if it's split into two, perhaps people with lived experiences might take one of the projects and people who have expertise on legal and labor union could take the other project. I have another, I have a question for you. Is this, it's, um, does Town of Amherst advertise uh, BID or RFP, whatever you call it, on combo on combi or the state combi? Yeah. Let me before I answer that, I want to just um, uh, defer momentarily to Ms. Ferreira and Ms. Walker. You had your hands up. Can we get an answer to that question, and then I'll go to Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Walker? Is that okay? So, M Mr. Delaney, please. Uh, that's correct. We would advertise on the town's website, on combis, and in the Gazette. Thank you. What what is combis? It's, go ahead. I guess uh, combis is the procurement website that is run by the Commonwealth. Uh, it's done for the state's own purchases as well as it's all the towns and cities in it. It's just a it's an advertising portal essentially for bids. Mm -hmm. And and can we also kind of refer people to to apply, do our own recruiting? Once it's public, yes. Mm -hmm. So was that your original question? No, I didn't no, think no, so. No. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my other questions kind of goes along with what uh, Mr. Vernon Jones and, and Ms. Pat on Ibaku um, were talking about. Mm -hmm. Is well, me one. I I want to get a little bit more sense about the bid and the RFP. Um, because one, I am, I, I do want it to be as quickly as possible, as opposed to going through a whole drawn out process, because we have a very short time frame, right? But I want us to get good candidates and good applicants and people that are going to do good work, because because this is something that we're going to need in terms of help. So that's one, right? And I need to know how can we do this so that we can get this done, right, in a, as quickly uh, as possible. But the second one is around the multiples, right? Um, so if we do the bid or if we do the RFP, can we get, you know, kind of, if we wanted to bifurcate or to have three people that we hire or whatever that are gonna do different segments of this job, because this is a lot. It might not be in just one person. It might not be in just one firm, 
right? So how do we do that, um, you know, well, so that it gives everyone an opportunity, a fair opportunity to apply to this? So that's my question to Mr. Delaney. So Mr. Delaney, if maybe you would respond to that and then I'll go to Ms. Walker. Uh, so first, a, a question for the committee. Um, have the various procurement vehicles methods that are available to you been explained at a, at a previous meeting, getting quotes versus getting bids versus getting proposals? Yeah, Mr. Bachelman explained a little bit, but not in, in a lot of detail because he said basically you could explain it better. <laughs> this is your expertise. Uh, so I understood it because I do, I do business with the state and the federal government. So I understand it. Oh, okay. Uh, so there are essentially three ways to get the services that you're looking for. Uh, there is a simple quote solicitation in which you would pick three or more firms that you believe can do the work, send them your scope of work, get responses. This would not be an advertised process or it wouldn't have to be. Um, and then you would take the lowest bidder that meets your minimum qualifications. The second more rigorous kind of procurement would be an invitation for bid, an IFB, uh, which is uh, like the quotes, except that it's an advertised process. You would publish your uh, scope of work, receive responses, and take the lowest bidder that met your minimum qualifications. Uh, and the RFP, which uh, is I think what we were leaning towards for this procurement, uh, allows you to balance qualifications and price and take them, take them both into account and decide who has basically the best bang for your buck. Um, and you don't just take the lowest bid, but the best services you can get weighed against the price. Uh, there's a unfortunate catch with the RFP, which is that it cannot be used for procurements below $50,000. It's not a very sensible law in my opinion, but the inspector general has been pretty clear on it. So if you are uh, going to divide this procurement into two, I think your odds are good that separately, each of them would be less than $50,000 and you could not conduct an RFP process. Uh, on the other hand, the RFP process is longer because of the complicated evaluation. You don't know who the winner is on the, the minute you open the bids. Uh, so you are looking at extra time uh, to conduct that. And I know time is important. So um, multiple ways to, to get to what you're looking for here. There are, there are pros and cons to each. Uh, there would be no issue with splitting the, um, there would be no issue with splitting if you did an invitation for bid. I would probably, if you did split, I would probably not go the soliciting quotes route and you can't do if, since that would, that might look like, um, bid splitting to avoid competition. And I think you're not, and the quote route has a ceiling of $50,000 anyway. So realistically, we're probably looking at either an IFB for one or two or an RFP for one. Uh, I hope, I hope I kind of ran through that. I hope I was, I hope that was good. Sorry, just one quick one. Is there any ceiling in terms of uh, price for the IFB? Because you said with the with the mm -hmm. RFP, it has to be above 50 and then the other one quote below, but what about the IFB? The IFB can be for any value. Okay. Ms. Walker, uh, you had your hand up. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Um, I think Mr. Delaney answered a few of the questions that I had. Um, and also may have changed my comment a bit because I originally was going to speak to wanting to do an RFP because I think that because of the nature of our work that there's a lot of value in being able to weigh um, the different criteria that we, we want to meet for whoever um, comes to work with us. Um, but it complicates it because I also agree with Ms. Pat's suggestion in splitting it into two and that way we can get to a different area of expertise is working on the categories at a time and the fact that some of the things we need vary in nature and and one group may not have all of the expertise to to address both of them so that just uh for me anyhow complicates things a little bit so i would just be interested 
in hearing what other members of the group are thinking in terms of which route to go. Mr. Vernon Jones. I have another question, I think for Mr. Delaney. Um, is there a way to do this so that we can put it out and when we get a response, we can go, this looks great for items one, two, seven, eight, nine, but not so great for the others. Can we then hire them for the parts we like and not, uh, not award it at all? Or maybe go to a quote process for the pieces that we want to fill in? Um, yes. Uh, you can structure the bid such that you give yourself the option to award multiple contracts. Uh, we do that normally more for goods. If you offer the best price on widget A, but not for cog B, we, uh, but we could do it for a, a service like this. Um, it, it would be easiest in the IFB format. In the RFP format, the evaluation would become very complicated, um, but it's feasible. It could be done. So, um... I get, let me go, Ms. Walker, you go first, please. Sorry, um, I was just wondering, so the IFB, we have to cho choose the lowest bid. So how would that work if we were to decide to assign them certain tasks and then try to have a separate contract for the other tasks? <clears throat> so you would structure in an IFB where you were awarding, possibly awarding multiple people, you would ask for a price for however you decided to divide the tasks. So if you, um, could someone remind me how you were thinking of splitting the- What, what, okay. oh. so what we're uh, thinking, can I see? We're yeah. thinking of split, splitting the A and C and then B and D. Yeah, so okay. you- The community engagement and the training. So, so you would solicit, you would have on your price form, say, give us a price for the community engagement, give us the price for the training. Um, and we will award one contract for A and A and for A and one contract for B. And if it's the same person that has the lowest price, then, then they get both. But you would, uh, you, you would, you would essentially ask for two prices, uh, one for each half and uh, in the same form and award based on that. You mean A and C and B and D, correct? Okay. I do mean I do mean that. Thank you. Okay. It's moisture. And um Anthony, is there a limit to how many people they can ask to submit for the bid? There is no, there's no limit under uh, under any of the schemes there would be no limit to the number of people you could solicit. Okay. But there is a minimum uh, under quotes, there's a minimum of three. Under an IFB or an RFP, it's advertised. So uh, there's no requirement that you receive so many. There's just a requirement that you advertise to everyone. Mr. Vernon Jones, and then uh, I think Ms. Walker. Uh, again, Mr. Delaney, you said that we need to take the lowest bid that meets our minimum criteria. Can we specify mm -hmm. different criteria for different sections? Different, different services. Uh, if you were making multiple awards, I think that would be sensible. Yeah, I, I would, I would do that. So that's Miss Walker and then Miss Miss Pat. Um, my question was very similar because I was wondering about uh, since we have to take the lowest bid, we don't have as much control over the criteria of the group that we end up working with. So I just wanted to know, is there absolutely no flexibility in that if the people that ended up applying and submitting the lowest bid were people that didn't meet all of the needs or we didn't think would be sufficient or would we be binded? Uh, in an IFB, uh, your minimum criteria are probably one of the most important sections of the bid. So you would want to structure it very carefully to avoid that happening. You're not you're not obligated to award if you receive if the bids you receive 
if you don't think they're satisfactory, um, you're not obligated to award, you could go out to bid again, that would be more time, but you would not be stuck with someone that you didn't want to award in the end. Mm -hmm. and I think Ms. Ferreira, you had your hand up and then Ms. Pack. No, okay, Ms. Pack. So um, Ms. Marston, if you don't mind, can you put the, um, the document up? I want to point Mr. Delaney on something. Do you mind? Thank you. So scroll uh, minimum requirement. Page seven. Okay. Uh, under minimum, okay, the second one. Um, so I was, um, we were thinking project A and C for the minimum requirement to be three references of anti-racist work. And also, um, uh, li also lived experiences of racism and track record of working with communities on racial equity and police reform. For those two minimum requirements for project A and C, am I making sense to people? Mr. Delaney? Uh, that, that makes sense. Are you asking for me to-, to So weigh offer? in. Yeah, so for the project A and C, how do you feel about for the minimal requirement to have three references of anti-racist work and also requirement for lived experiences as, as the two minimum requirements? Um, my only suggestion would be that maybe you would want more clarification about the nature of the anti-racist work. If you want it to be anti-racist work in certain fields rather than going that broad. Um, I mean, anti-racist work could include community organizing. Um, it doesn't, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bachelman? So I think when minimum requirements, it's a yes, no answer. Did you hit the minimum requirement or not? And you don't do a qualitative assessment of it. You define it well enough where they said, they said, I'm, if you say, please submit three similar projects, if they submit three similar projects, they, you, they check, yes, you've done what you've done. You've done the minimum requirement. You don't get to make an assessment of how well they did that project. Um, yes, um, Mr. Delaney, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, so that's true. I mean, if, um, like the minimum requirement that says you want references from similar projects. If the references turned out to be bad, that that could be potentially disqualifying. You you can you can evaluate your minimum on that. Mm -hmm. That's where I, that's why I get a little nervous about references of of anti racist work. Where I think I think you want just a little more detail on the nature of that work. Community organizing is that clearer? I I yeah I might I might say I might say exactly that. In that case, yeah, I, I defer to you, but that's just my. What input. do people? Yeah, what do people think? Community organizing experience. Well, I, I if I if I may, I, I think you know, getting back to being as specific as possible, I, I that certainly Miss Pack could be one of one of the, the things that we include. I think when we're talking about anti-racist work, which is not a focus of the work I do, certainly, but certainly. A, a focus of interest and commitment on my part, but it would be, you know, being very specific about what it is we're talking about in terms of anti-racist work as it relates to what we're doing with our work with the police department in our community. So I think it's the more specific, we, the more specific we can be, the, the better chance we're going to attract someone or some service that's going to have, um, you know, get some traction for what we need to have happen for us. So yes, in answer to your question, I think community um, 
of organization could be part of it. Uh, there, there could be some other criteria that um, we, we need to examine as a group or as a subcommittee to come up with more specificity. But I want to get back to also, as I'm saying that to a comment made by Ms. Ferreira um, earlier, is that the, the timing of this is very critical. I mean, if we, for example, we allow for an RFP and we want to get a quick turnaround, we don't want to sort of, uh, you know, not support what we're trying to do by trying to rush th through this thing just to get, get somebody on board really, you know, very quickly. We want to have somebody on board who can do the work. We want to have it done as quickly as possible. We want to have a person or a group or agency, whatever, that can actually uh, follow through in a, in a way for us. If we go too long with this, it's going to compromise the, the work of the group. Um, at the same time, and I'm stating the obvious, we don't want to rush through it to uh, just to, to get somebody on board. Ms. Moisten. Yeah, so I just did a quick Google search of anti-racist work in um, bids. And so there's a, a more of a, the bid description that's listed for Vermont is pretty thorough. I don't really, I can send it out tomorrow. Um, so everyone can take a look at it, but I just thought that would be helpful. I don't really know where else, Anthony, do you know, have any suggestions of where we might find a, another example of a anti-work, anti-racist work within a bid? Uh, I was trying to find some examples of that before the meeting. I, I wasn't terribly successful for uh, for anything beyond. I, I kept coming up with racial diversity hiring consultants, which isn't really yeah. relevant. So I, I will continue to look, but at this moment, I, I do not have anything. So I can, um, I'll send this out to, or do you guys want me to try and pull it up? I mean, that might be. Mr. Bachman? So it seems that speed is important because we have a deadline. So it seems that we need to do the one of the first two, the bid process versus the RFP process, just at least for the first part of the, of the project. Um, the first part of the project is to talk about alternative services, public safety services. Um, and maybe it's that we the committee spends its time on that first piece of it. Let's look at alternative services and have someone help us with that. And maybe do it, what you, and then do a simultaneous bid or a side-by-side -side or a companion bid that does the other piece, like like the, the subgroup said, let's do two, because it's two different skill sets and just and put it out there and see what we get back. We can pull that off. We just need a little bit more definition on things. I think if you had someone work with uh, Mr. Delaney, we could put that out in relatively short time frame, I'm guessing Mr. Delaney and have something back in a relatively short time frame. The other thing we would need is people to send it to um, who you think you would like to work as consult with as consultants. Yep. And so their bid description is their description is there on the screen now. Kind of. So again, I can email it tonight after the meeting. Can you scroll up? Up? Mm -hmm. Up? Let's see. Are people comfortable with community organizing? Well, I mean, okay, I, I just wanted to kind of chime in. I just think like, you know, since we're not going to, if we're doing this, this um, IFB, we're going to be taking the lowest um, uh, bidder and things like that. And we don't have as much control at that point. Like what I was hearing from, um, you know, what I've heard about the, the information so far is that I think we need to kind of really be very specific in terms of our criteria, you know, like our minimum calls and stuff so that then, you know, folks know exactly what it is that we're looking for. So yeah, I think we should add what you're saying, Ms. Pat, but we might need to add other things, you know, to it too, so that we're, we're very specific in terms of what we need. And then my other question too, kind of looking at what you all have put together is that I know, I know, Ms. Pat, you had said A and B, I mean, no, 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 no. A and C and then B and D, but what about, what about E, F, G, H? What about those? 
because there's still like a whole bunch of other stuff too. So all I, I, I guess I'm thinking what E F G H is also part of the A and C and B and D. I will assume that. Um, can you scroll? I'm scrolling. E, uh, e F. F. That it will repeat itself in each project. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so then. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, we were not too clear. Yeah. I'm assuming okay. that they will repeat each other. You know. Itself. Okay, got it, got it. So then those on the bottom will just be on, on each proposal, yeah. Exactly, yes. Thanks. The, the only area that I'm still um, wrestling with is the mental health that is on D. Um, it seems like it, it should be a whole project of its own, but it's okay. <laughs> like I, I, you know, we weren't sure where to, you know, plug that in. It's just the mental health seems like huge to me. On D. Which one was that on D? Part of D, part of D, yeah. Number, can you go to D? I think you passed it. Did I pass it? I think yeah, the other way. I think you, but anyway, yeah. Let's leave it the way it is right now for the sake of time. <laughs> I think what, what I'd like to su suggest is all, this is an indication of, there are a lot of, lot of questions and you know, I wanna go back to first thank um, Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Pat and who else was working on that? Ms. Walker. Ms. Walker, thank you, the three of you for, for doing this and honing in on some of the language and, and adding some things in particular, there were several uh, items in there that were added, I think add a lot of substance to it. Um, it seems like this needs some reworking based on what we're getting from this meeting right now, not the least of which is some, you know, more specific language around anti-racism work, certainly, uh, you know, a recommendation as to, you know, what, what to go forward with in a, in a timely manner, whether that's an invitation to bid or an RFP or some combination of the, the two. And um, uh, again, we can we can work through this, continue to work through this here, uh, but at the same time, you know, given uh, the folks who have been working on it, hearing that you all come together and, uh, you know, reassess where you are or where we need to be relative to the comments and suggestions we get tonight and come up with something else that can go out to the the group probably before the, the next meeting. And I know Ms. Walker, you had your hand up, so. And then Ms. Ferreira. Um, so I was wondering, um, I can't remember who said this, but I think that we should go with the, in, the invitation for bid and split it into two. Um, I think if we can decide that as a group, if people are ready to just make that decision today, um, I think we should make that decision because I think in order if uh, Russ, Pat and I were to go back and revise this again, I think it would be helpful for us to know which one we were going to do for sure first. Um, and that way we can come up with a final draft that can be sent out. And my proposal for that would be for us to really seriously look at the, um, the qualifications and go back over that section because I do agree with Mrs. Ferreira that they should be a lot more specific if, if we're gonna do the invitation um, for bid as opposed to the RFP. Mm -hmm. Well taken. Ms. Ferreira and then Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, so for me, you know, when I looked at the document, which again was really um, great that you all worked on, um, you know, putting this together for us to look at, um, I guess we, we, we need to, you know, just some of the, at, you know, kind of questions that I had, and I, I know, Ms. Pat, you already kind of talked about a little bit, was, and I think this can kind of um, dictate or maybe guide us in terms of where we're going, and Mr. Bachman had talked a little bit about it too, was the phase one, phase two, right off the bat, where we don't have a date, because I think last time we talked about uh, possibly doing the first report by March 31st, because we needed that extension, so March 31st, 2021, so maybe that's phase one, where we have to give like the alternatives, and then phase two, which is by June 30th, which is that second part of our charge that then we, we do it like that. But that, that already has a date, June 30th, but we need to plug in that first date because that's gonna guide, you know, 
when we need work done by. And then for me, the other quick one, it was just like there was um, just a question I had on E, write the last one. I think it's just a typo, something's left out. So I just didn't understand it. So I just was kind of like, just first to kind of look at if you guys are using it, which it just says like prioritize the needs of people and communities of color, reduce, eliminate the threat that police, and then it just kind of ends off, you know, just to kind of add that. And then, um, and then again, in E, I, I was just bringing up the fact that, you know, we're not talking about the first report there, the March 31st that we need to, um, we're just talking about the June 30th date. So we need to kind of make sure that we're including that we have a, a March 31st deadline and then the June 30th deadline. Um, and, then, and then I wasn't just clear in terms of like the sample work plan um, and I know, I guess you all haven't, yeah, we need to look at the dates for that, you know, to kind of make sure, you know, if we're going to put dates, I, I guess, do we need to put dates? And if so, if we're going to put dates, we need to work on that, you know? And then it has kind of like, um, you know, time and location of meetings be coordinated by consultant staff and members, provide, provide participation stipends, all stipend costs must be included in price proposal. So who's doing those, you know, the stipend costs, is it? Why is that included in the proposal? So I, I guess whoever I gets the so whoever gets the contract will handle that. So they're going to be paying for the for the stipends. So I okay. Yes, whoever gets the contract. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't clear. And then um, my other question was number two: working group outline. Um, is this for the first report? I wasn't clear on that. Um, and then like some of the things that we have over here, right? So 3C, it says like presentations shall take place when possible at the same locations as outreach meetings. All travel costs must be included in vendor price proposal, uh, pro provide refreshments, all costs must be included in price proposal. So I think we need to update some of that because some of this is gonna be all virtual. So there's not gonna yep. be travel. That's true, yeah. So That's we true. need to kind of, yeah, we need to make yeah. sure we're very specific, um, yeah. you know, what we're including. And then, um, yeah, and then I had another question about who's providing this because it says interpretation would be provided at all community meetings as requested. Flyers, handouts, and final documents shall all be translated into the above languages. So are we asking them to provide that? Yeah, I mean, it will be a part of the contract. Okay. Yes. All right. Mr. Vernon Jones, you had your hand up. Oh, well, so, sorry, I just had one oh, last go ahead. one. Uh -huh. Sorry, I just had another one. The interviews, I, I, I think we need to clear that up. And also it says, you know, interview day, and it says at town hall for Boltwood Avenue. Again, it's going to be virtual. So we need to kind of make sure that we're being clear. Okay, then Mr. Uh, that was Jones it. and then Ms., Mr., uh, Mr. Delaney. Well, if Mr. Delaney wants to respond to what Deborah said, why don't we have him go first? Mr. Delaney? Sorry, uh, I only, uh, I'm glad you brought up the interviews. Uh, if you were doing an RFP, you would do interviews. I'm not sure that you would do interviews uh, in the case of an IFB. Okay, good to know. So then we need to take that out then. Yeah. Yeah. That was all. Back to Mr. Vernon Jones. If we're going to split this in two, I would suggest we do want the, one of them first. Uh, and wait until we've learned a little bit by going through this process once before we do the second one. And my inclination would be to focus the first one on outreach and alternative services, um, which is sort of A and C, but not, it's, it's a little different split perhaps than what we were talking about before. Um, but to do the first one to get help with, with the first phase of our project uh, and then save the pieces that are more about police policy and contract and oversight and all for the, the second one. And Mr. Vernon Jones, you, you are, are going back to Ms. Walker's um, comment, that would be through an invitation for bid? Yes. Uh -huh. And Ms. Bowman has her hand raised. Ms. Bowman. So how 
I think I kind of like Severin Jones's um how he's thinking because one of the things that I feel like happens a lot is that we are like we work on the ideas and we work on them so much that we kind of tap people out on a bunch of ideas. And it sounds like, and, and obviously correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're saying, let's get the at the aspect of it where we're where we have certain things that we know need to be implemented now and get working on those kind of first, where we're actually like starting the action with things that are clear and obvious, and then you know, getting the more fine-tuned policy stuff done later on i kind of i i is, is that what you were saying mr vernon jones i yes i think so okay yeah because that's that that actually like at first when you were talking like, uh-uh. and then i was like wait wait but but if we're getting it the problem is is that these resources aren't there these these there's there's nothing to really tap into so if we are if we automatically like there's certain services that are already there that we can already tap into. So yeah, let's get that going first. I think I froze. I think I'm frozen. Oh. Ms. Ferreira. I think I raised So my I guess phone. I guess okay. just just for clarity, again, um, Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, and I guess for Ms. Bowman too, is just in terms of like, but are you all talking about, I guess like what I was saying, like phase one of what we need to do and phase two of what we need to do? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's what you all are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Quick. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Pat. So I just want to, I agree with what everybody has said so far. I just want to remind people that in section D, we have the mental health project, I think should be moved to A, to A and C. That's the only thing. And the mental health, I think it should be um, phase one of the project. I agree. Yeah. I also agree that the mental health stuff should be moved up um, yes. because it's, it is, it's true, it's like, a lot of issues that come that we come across have something to do with mental health stuff. So, yes. mm -hmm. if we we're utilize, if we we're getting those resources working faster, that would definitely be better. So, so what? So, what is the timeline? When do you guys want this turn around? Like Monday or? Well, if we're going to go forward, you know, as quickly as possible, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the current uh, subgroup of folks um, where you all stand in terms of getting back to another um, iteration of this, but the, the, the sooner the better, certainly, and I can't speak, speak for those folks. Um, but uh, we haven't set a next meeting date, but I'm sure, you know, we would need something to, to look at as a group before our next meeting date with the understanding that we we're probably going to go forward with an invitation to bid first mm -hmm. and get that moving um, and then prioritize the essential uh, aspects of what we need to done by the March 31st date. So I have to defer back to the, the group who's working on it um, to see where you all stand with that. Ms. Walker. Um, I agree, and I think we should work on any changes right away. And um, I am available to work, be working on this tomorrow. Um, but I think if it's possible to, I'm not sure how we would have, if we would have to make a motion to do so or, or a vote, but I think we should decide like formally as a group if we're going to go with invitation to bid before we make any more edits to the document so that we can know exactly how we should be tailor tailoring the document. And if we're going to split it up I think we also need to know that for sure before we make any more edits. Mr. Vernon Jones. I guess I would suggest that we work on it, you know, the subcommittee uh, uh, and uh, work on it, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, maybe Mr. Delaney does some 
comes up with some proposals and we come up with some proposals. And then that we actually post in order to conform to the open meeting law that we actually post a meeting uh, for our subcommittee and Mr. Delaney together mm -hmm. uh, to work out the details before our next uh, meeting of the whole working group. That, that's assuming we can figure out how to schedule that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that sounds reasonable. And I, I'm not sure if, um, uh, you know, if we necessarily have to take a vote on that. I think we're re requesting some work to be done by people who are already activated. I don't know if that's gonna be a consensus uh, of the group. If we have to vote on it, I'd like to turn it into a motion if someone would like to, to move that action. Mr. Vernon Jones. I move that we ask the subcommittee uh, and Mr. Delaney to prepare an invitation to bid um, on the aspects of the existing document that pertain to phase one of our work. The motion, uh, would someone like to second that motion? I second that motion. Ms. Herrera. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Can you raise your hand and I can see you. Thank you, it's unanimous. Thank you all. Given that, uh, if, I, if I may take some liberty to, to jump ahead, if we're talking about that work in, our, our, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Delaney. I just wanted to say I'm at liberty to help the subcommittee. Uh, you, My email address is on the cover page of it. So go ahead and uh, let me know when is convenient for you. I'll be happy to uh, work on your schedule. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Just uh, going back in, in terms of, you know, what you were proposing, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, in terms of posting a, a, a meeting of the subcommittee to work with Mr. Delaney, for example, it might serve us well to set the next meeting date right now so that um, we have that perspective on where we're going uh, with this. Um, I'm going to get my. You mean the subcommittee open meeting? No, or like... our next actual gotcha. uh, okay. community safety working group meeting. Um, and we've gotten off a little bit uh, from our Wednesdays, but uh, the question would be could we return back to Wednesday or does that shorten the, the moment you all have to work with? Um, you know, in a subgroup, and perhaps it should be Thursday. I'm flexible. I'm kind of looking to the, um, I don't want to put any undue time. I, I would prefer, I would prefer that the meeting be Wednesday and that we live with that time pressure. I would prefer Which, Wednesday as well. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, who, I sort of, Two hands at the same time. It's Tashina, sorry. Tashina, I prefer Wednesday. Um, Ms. Walker. Uh, Wednesday also works for me. Um, but so I'm wondering if the other members of the subcommittee, as well as Mr. Delaney, would be available for a meeting on Tuesday. And if that's something we could just set up now so that we can have that posted. That was going to be the, the, yeah. the next question. <laughs> I think they kind of, they run parallel, those questions, yeah. because um, we have some, you know, quick postings we'd have to do for both of those those meetings. Oh, two days, okay. They have to be, okay. I was thinking Monday. So uh, is Mr. Delaney still in the, there he is. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so Ms. Walker uh, had a question, I don't know if you heard it or not, but there, you know, as to whether or not there could be a subcommittee meeting, including you, that meets before our uh, next Wednesday uh, community safety working group. Uh, yes, I, I'm happy to happy to make time in my schedule for that. Thank you. Okay. 
So, so we're what, talking about. So what time so, on Tuesday? So we're talking about. Um, so that, that does that Tuesday work for the subcommittee group? Um, I'm not available five thirty to seven thirty, but I could in the evening. But I could meet before or after that. What about you, Miss uh, Walker? Um, I could meet before that, but I'm not sure I would be able to meet earlier than four o'clock. So I don't know if that would give us enough time. Um, I could also meet Monday. I don't know if that's enough time for everyone else in the group. I mean, if what if uh, Miss Marston is going to post it, oh, does that give us two it? days, right? So it's kind of too late today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has to be Tuesday. Oh, if we, oh my goodness, <laughs> right, yeah, posted it. If we posted it right now, we could meet at seven Monday night. Oh, that would be a long day for Mr. Delaney. Come on. <laughs> Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? I am at so, your disposal. Huh? At your disposal. Are you sure? Uh, if it's okay at all. <laughs> you can't I feel, post. I feel guilty. Hold, hold, hold on one second, Ms. Pat. Ms. Pat. Ms. Moyston. Let's... You, you can't, we can't. So I have to send it to the town clerk who has right. to post it and oh, she's okay. gone for the day. So everything right. has to be done by 4.30. Okay, so we can't meet till Tuesday in any case. Yes. Okay. So the question is, can you meet at Tuesday at four o'clock and would that give you enough time to, to do what needs to be done? Ms. Walker? While they're contemplating that, let me go to Mr. Bachelman. So I think uh, maybe Mr. Delaney can sort of separate this and do some work on it so, and send it out to the group in advance so you can all look at it so that your time at four o'clock on Tuesday is very efficient. Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, I, perhaps all of us can do some work on it. And That's what I was thinking. Communicate That's by email um, yeah. tomorrow and, and Monday so that by the time we get to Tuesday, we've got a lot of it sorted out. That's what I was thinking. Does, that, does yeah. that sound better to you or more useful, Ms. Walker? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. Ms. Pat? Yeah. Mr. Delaney, yes. Uh, who is the subcommittee? Who are, who are all the members? The subcommittee is uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Walker, and uh, Ms. Uh, Sononi Baku, Ms. Pat. Thank you. Okay. So, and I would also, if uh, any other members of the working group have some input that we also get that to Ms. Moyston to pass on as quickly as possible so that it can be incorporated in the, in the work of the group on Tuesday. So uh, we will post that meeting tomorrow, Ms. Moyston. Yes. And we're talking about four o'clock on Tuesday. Yes. And uh, then we will meet at 5.30 on Wednesday as, a, as an entire group. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are, are we good? Mr. Vernon Jones. I would like to thank Mr. Bachelman for having Mr. Delaney join us tonight. Good move. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to thank Mr. Delaney for accepting the invitation. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, no choice. That's is, the boss. <laughs> it's Mr. Delaney's idea because he knows he explains things better than me. <laughs> Fine. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so all very much. I'm going to excuse myself as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you both. Thank you. So that's good work, folks. It's a lot of work, um, but it, it's, it's, it's very essential work, I think, for us going forward. So um, thanks again to the subcommittee to, to do that work. And let's, let's try to honor their work by getting them some information, the rest of us, as, as quickly as possible. So that they can use it. Um, Ms. Ms. Moyston. Does this little sub, does this subcommittee have a name or am I just going to write community safety working group subcommittee? Um, Ms. Ms. Pat. I have, what? Yeah. <laughs> invitation I, to be, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's it. Invitation to be. <laughs> yeah. Invitation to bid subcommittee, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. No. What oh, do you I, think, I Mr. Ross? You. Oh, I think invitation to bid subcommittee works. I, Alicia, does that work for you? Yeah, I think that's fine. Does that work? Okay, great. Perfect. 
I just want to comment that um, I'm glad that I joined this subcommittee. It just feel very natural like I'm doing regular work because it's, it's a subject that I know I deal with every day in my work life. So it's fun for me. Just want to say that. Well, we're glad you all are working on it, uh, all, all three of you. And thank you, you know, for yeah. that work. Let's, let's move forward, please, uh, to uh, defund 413 demand letter update. I, um, did one of us submit that as a Ms. Ferreira? Maybe you yeah. can take the lead on that for us, please. Yeah, so I just I submitted that just because I know that um, they sent that to us by an email a couple of weeks ago or maybe two weeks ago or something. And then there was something else or someone else did something about it, either at a forum or one of the um, you know open comment times. Um, or maybe they sent us another email about it, I'm not sure. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of get a sense of, you know, we haven't discussed it yet. It's been, you know, one of the first email was whether we would, you know, we would join in and whether we, we even knew about it. Cause I don't know if you guys have looked at it. It's saying that they're asking also besides asking for the, you know, um, town manager, um, uh, chief Livingstone and uh, town council members to say that there wasn't anyone from the police who were part of the um, capital attack in DC. They're also with the petition saying that they want to make sure that nothing like the positions that the police have, uh, I guess have two positions that they want to hire for, that that kind of um, does not get, get searched until we, we finish our work. So, so anyway, so I, I mean, for me, it's, it's just kind of out there and we haven't discussed it. So I guess I just was feeling like, okay, what's going on with that? Moisten. So unfortunately, Paul would have probably been able to give you an update on how the chief is going to be responding to the letter in regards to his staff. But I know that that those two positions are not going to be filled until mm -hmm. we've made our recommendation but i also just wanted to make sure that you all received they sent a a, a lot an email with several resources on it did everyone receive that today yes. and yeah. so we can put it in the packet for next week so you guys can have some time to review it but i think that the information in there will be very helpful to you yeah because okay. uh, you're seeing all the res the, the links and all the information the data that they sent us to yes. yeah because yeah. i i did not have a chance to look at that um, okay, so then, so then the chief is going to be responding to it according to what you're saying, Ms. Moisten? No, I'm saying that Paul could have uh, spoke on that piece of it, mm -hmm. but he's gone. What I'm saying is that the two positions aren't going to be filled. Okay. Mr. Vernon Jones? I believe that according to this morning's Daily Hampshire Gazette, the town manager announced definitively that no member of the police department had participated uh, in events in the Capitol on this on the sixth. Now that's that's not everything that the the letter was demanding, but I think he mm -hmm. he got that information and shared it with the town council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I and I think that's a good idea to to you know again we're 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 trying to digest lots of different information and we we do uh, receive input from groups like, uh, you know, who are actively working, uh, you know, on, on issues related to the police, um, defund 413 um, in, a, in a somewhat connected, but uh, slightly different way, you know, there's reparations for Amherst and there are other kinds of uh, movements that have a lot to, to do with uh, uh, racial and so racial justice, racial equity, um, Act racism uh, and social justice. So, at some point, they they are also offering us information, um, and they're looking for cross support from us as a group. I think what these these groups do for us is that they give us some additional perspective, because they they have many of them many, and I'm not I'm, could be including other groups as well, but they've been working longer than we have. We've only been in, in place about two months. So they have a lot of information. They're actively willing to share it and we welcome it. So having an opportunity to look at resources um, at each of our meetings may be something we wanna do and see how we wanna incorporate it and be informed by it. So I would welcome 
that Ms. Moyston to, you know, have that information and uh, have that move to our, our Wednesday agenda. We can begin discussing it. Other comments from folks relative to that? Well, I guess- Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I guess for me, it's just kind of almost like this one and uh, H on the agenda, like response to emails sent to, you know, CSWG, who and how often. I guess those are the things that, that's why I brought this up because I'm kind of like, I didn't know, was there a response from like the chair or the co-chair just to say, thank you, we received it, you know? I guess that's the thing. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do that, or if right. any of the members are supposed to do that, you know? So that's why it becomes a question mark, you know? So um, so really, yeah, so those are the, the things, you know, kind of like, how do we kind of organize some of that? Or, you know, obviously we can all share in, responding to folks, um, but yeah, just wanted some guidance around it. Well, I, I just in response to, to you, Ms. Rahm, in the same, same boat, because I see this information and a lot of it gets passed on as it should, you know, from Ms. Moyston who received it through the town and it's addressed to the CSWG members. Mm -hmm. So um, I sought some advice myself from Ms. Moyston, uh, Mr. Bauckham and said, you know, do I engage with, with this, these individuals or groups. And uh, it, it seems appropriate and also uh, necessary to acknowledge the receipt of these resources um, and to respond in kind. So I, I have done so. In fact, I had a conversation uh, with a member of our community, uh, speaking mostly as a, as, a, as a citizen, but certainly encouraging them to go through the, um, you know, through our town, uh, site and Ms. Moyson to get information to us. So yes, Ms. Ferrer, we should be responding and acknowledging the receipt of these, this information. And in addition to that, you know, my response was not only acknowledging, but encouraging them uh, who send information to participate in these weekly meetings so that they can see what we're doing and see where their information may fall in line with what we're doing or not. And also uh, note that we are you know, actively paying attention to it as well. And I think we all are, as has been demonstrated by a lot of the things we're doing with webinars and reading articles and those kinds of things. So um, as this goes forward, uh, perhaps uh, maybe Ms. Moyson, if I'm responding uh, to something that's come to the group, I'm responding on behalf of the group, should that be also uh, something that is uh, you know, further is articulated to the, the community group as well to know that it happened to the to the safety group. I mean, I think that's up to your members and whether or not you guys feel comfortable with that. Um, I can't say that all the time, but if they come directly to me, I usually tell the recipient thank you, and I forwarded this to the mm -hmm. community safety oh, working okay. group. No, but cool. I think that sometimes they're looking for maybe a little bit more, and then that, and I don't because I don't want to speak for you. I just say thank you for sending it to me. But if it goes directly to the community safety working group email, I don't I don't respond to those. Mm. So you guys. Um, should figure out just have one person responding to the emails and they can either CC everybody else or you guys just have that faith. Yeah. That's what I was told. Yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yes, Mr. Vernon Jones. I know when I've written to the, I know when I've written to the town council, I, I, I think I've always gotten a response from the chair or president of the council. And mm -hmm. sometimes I get comments, you know, or some kind of email back from one or two or three of the other counselors and I, I'd be comfortable with that kind of procedure where we, if we get something, we know that you're going to respond yeah. and we can decide whether you want to CC us or not. And then we may or may not want to add in a thank you or mm -hmm. uh, individually, but there's no expectation that we have to. Ms. Pat. So actually, I'm glad we're discussing this because I have assumed when we first met that the chair you know, we'll be representing, you know, our group. So I just assume that the chair will be responding to, you know, group emails like this. So mm -hmm. I have no problem, you know, for the chair to be doing that if it's not too much work for you. No, it's not too much work. Okay. It, it, and it's a matter of fact, I'm glad we're talking about it too, because I have been responding. Okay. And I think the next step is to, you know, make that response available to the group. Okay. So, so what, what, oh, sorry. 
I'd be happy to CC it. It's just, it, it's not, it's an extra couple of finger strokes on the keyboard. <laughs> but it would be important for everybody to know that it happened and the, the content of the response. So, this Pat. So I was, I was going to say for, for, for transparency, some of the emails or comments or letters of people that I know personally, I do respond to them. And I make it clear that I am not speaking for the group, you know, it's because of our friendship. So I do extend my appreciation just on myself. Yeah. Just to put it out there. No, and that's, that, that, that's appropriate. And that's very appropriate. And, and, and a good thing to do because I, I think um, that that's, I, I think all of us have been talking to, to folks, they've been reaching out to us, we've been reaching out to them in some ways uh, because we do know them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we are, we're citizens of this community as well. So we should have, uh, we should be able to and have these conversations. So, Ms. Bond, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and I just wanted to agree with like all of you and what Mr. Vernon Jones said. I think it's appropriate. It's good though that we have like a system now. I mean, I, I like it that obviously Mr. Wiley as a chair, you're responding to it. And then, but if any of us have any kind of connection or whatever, that we could we feel free too to also respond. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So I'm not breaking any law. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm trying because I'm used to being a boss. So. <laughs> I am trying. You're doing, you're doing well. We're just going to follow your lead, Mr. Yeah, we're, I don't we're, know about that. We're, we're, we're good. I, we're, I don't like following anybody's lead. That's my problem. Well, if we don't see you on the screen at the next meeting, we know something happened to you. <laughs> you broke some law. No, anyway, but this, but this is good, doing, though. It, it makes me feel good, though, uh, Mr. Wiley, that you have been responding to them because obviously we do want that information. We do want to thank them. This is wonderful. We want them to be, you know, partners in this. We this do. is a partnership. So yeah, we 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 want that definitely, and we should encourage it. So um, it's uh it's about seven o'clock. We're gonna move forward a little bit here, and uh, just this um this next item. I made the after action review. Um, and that's in quotes, and I don't know if necessarily um, we do anything with this now. Maybe this is more information, but it it seems like, and let's just let me just isolate for the community uh, forums we had. I'd like to suggest to the group that we make some time to look at those forums, for example, as an example of our work. And there's some basic questions around an action, after action review. It, simply put, it's like, what, did, what do we wanna have happen? What actually happened? And what needs to happen next? And I think it just gives us a pause and it doesn't have to be a lengthy, totally involved thing, but a discussion about those forms in terms of procedure, in terms of uh, the, the flow of it, whatever you want to bring to it, but have that conversation so that in the future, as we're going to various uh, parts of our community with outreach, if we find that through some of those, the things we did in the forum, that there might be a few things we want to tweak to do better, or that we eliminated, or some things we just actually did that we, we, we nailed it, we want to keep doing that, that we at least have that discussion um, as, as a group. So I'm going to just put that out there, and I, I put a lot of other things on there, you know, compensation, those kinds of things. But I mean, but that's in the next outreach. But the community forums, in particular, as to say, how do we do there? You know, what information did we get that's kind of going to, you know, go forward? So, wanted to hear your thoughts about just that as a process um, to see if it, it, you know, has any traction. See if you'd like to do that. I, I'd hate to go forward thinking that we missed something in, in what we did uh, uh, in our community forums or not acknowledge what we did well and be willing to repeat it. So let me, let me stop there and just see if there are any comments on that. And the other stuff after the forward slash is a different thing, but anyway, your thoughts about sort of assessing as we go, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I just, um, for me, um, the, the both of the forms, I think, brought, you know, gave us a lot of 
great information from the community. Um, so I guess for me, what I'd like to capture is I'm sure each of us kind of took different things from those forums. So maybe like if we each had like obviously the major things, some of the major bullet points for us, you know, individually, maybe we could kind of start a little spreadsheet of those, right? Because some of them might be end up being repetitive, but maybe some will be different. Um, and that could be some of the things that obviously could inform some of our recommendations, you know, obviously moving forward. So for me, anyway, that's how I was thinking about it. But obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's a lot smarter people than me on this committee. So y'all share. <laughs> well, I'm not one of them. So um, <laughs> any other comments? If I may, what I could do as, as you're thinking too, what I'd like, what I could do is, is put those uh, out to you as uh, through Ms. Moist and say, here's some, here's some prompts to think about in terms of the community forums. Ask those particular questions and solicit that information from you. Um, it, it doesn't have to happen by next meeting, but certainly I, I think if you have some thoughts about it, um, you say, Here, here's where to place these thoughts. We can get it to Ms. Moist and at some point we can turn it into a document and it could be in our packet and we can take a look at it, that, if that helps. I don't think we have to do it right this second, but I think the you know reviewing our work as we go is important. Mr. Vernon Jones. Oh, I, I like that idea. Um, I wasn't sure as I heard you described it. Describe it. It seemed mostly about process, and what I heard what what Deborah said was more about the content and what are some of the things we learned, and maybe we could combine both of those in in your soliciting our feedback. We could, and and that's why I said. I was not as smart as her. It, it happened right in that instant. But uh, the process itself has a structure, but certainly what Ms. Ferreira said is, is important and that could be easily incorporated, Mr. Vernon Jones. I, I think there's a learning experience for us through that that, um, that we can capitalize on. So I'd be, I'd be happy to add that in and send it forward for people to think about. And I can repair to put a, re, you know, get back to me by such and such a date. Um, and then we'll be fine with it. And I, if that's okay, we can go with that. I will do that. And um, the next part of that piece was just next outreach initiatives. And you know, I, I think some of this is blending into some other uh, conversations that we somewhat had already. But certainly, we I don't want to lose this whole notion of uh, compensation, for example, for people who are. Um, uh, participating in the surveys, uh, attending forum, forums, meetings, what, whatever that entails. And uh, we did get some questions about UMass PD and um, the whole notion, and I said about community representatives, this, I was alluding mostly to a conversation we had about ambassadors working with folks. All of this may blend into something we're thinking about with the uh, uh, with the procurement of resources that we just talked about earlier. So I don't wanna dive into that necessarily, but again, keeping those conversations alive and, and important uh, and in front of us is important. So I don't know if we need to go further with that. If people wanna just add some comments, Ms. Ferreira, and then Ms. Pat. Um, I guess for me, the important part, right? Because I heard that from the forum was just in terms of how do we, outreach and get input from folks that are, you know, you know, kind of being impacted on the day to day and the folks that did not show up to the big public community forums. I know we've talked about ambassadors, so I guess I need to kind of know more about that. How are we getting that input? I really want to get the folks that are on the margins, the folks that, you know, we, we you know, wouldn't come out because of obviously um, fear of retaliation, maybe they want to speak in anonymity, because obviously um, language barriers, uh, you know, disability barriers in terms of developmental possibly barriers, whatever, what have you, all these different barriers, that's the part that I'm interested in. Like while we're doing these forums or whatever else we do, I need us to also be getting this input from folks and for folks to understand, and that's what we heard, right, in the forums, for folks to understand that we want to hear from them and we want to hear from more young people, for more folks that are on the margins and that are being impacted on the day to day that don't, 
live like we live, right? Or are dealing with the police like we are dealing with the police. So I, I want to I want to get that information. So we include it in in our recommendations, our work. So, Ms. Pat. This is, so this is just my own opinion, okay? So my hope, my thinking is, I'm hoping that the first phase of the project that we all agreed on that you know, somebody or groups of people in our community will be able to get the contract so that they will do the ambassadorship and you know, going into different groups that we have in this community. That's my hope. Um, I have to caution that we don't over ex extend ourselves. Um, as much as we want to do the outreach, I don't think given the time we have is feasible. And so, I mean, this is such an important project that we're back on. You know, the town should have the resources, you know, for the consultant to do the work thoroughly, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't see, I don't envision ourselves actually, you know, going to different groups. We can recommend to whoever lands the contract as to who the different groups are. For example, I, you know, I might be able to say, hey, go to this African you know, immigrant, I shouldn't even say African, you know, maybe West African or something like that group mm. as an example, or disability group as an example, yeah. And I think there, if I may, there's some, some agreement among us certainly that we, the reason for us asking for additional resources in, in the terms of time with an extension that we asked for, and also people, personnel, in terms of human resources mm. within this um, resource, uh, procurement process we're going through is that we realized we couldn't do all of that. Oh, and we had an a, initial list of, I, I can't remember how many groups and individuals are on that initial list that we wanted to outreach to. And that's a genuine desire to outreach them, but how do, how, what are the mechanics of that, how it happens? So, um, and I guess a lot of this it comes up in, in, the, uh, in sort of the aftermath, if you will, of that discussion earlier. That's where I think we're going to get our our support, and that's where we're going to make things happen. We just have to be really clear about what it is we want to do, and and how we want to outreach to people. So, one more thing, and I will shut up. One more thing, please. I don't want us to lose um, the twenty five dollar uh, appreciation gift. And my thinking is that for that amount, although it's not much, but if gift is going to be given out, I would strongly suggest that the money spent to businesses owned by BIPOC community. It's one of the things I would suggest. If, we're, if we decide to, if everybody is in agreement for $25, I like that uh, resources to go to folks uh, by by park, uh, business owners in this town. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we, we did have some conversation about that. I don't know if we came to a decision on necessarily where it went, but that's certainly part of the conversation, Ms. Pat. Um, Ms. Owen, I think you had your hand up. I was also going to bring up the compensation for people mm -hmm. and um, another thing I wanted to bring up that was brought up at the town council meeting was reaching people who don't have access to technology. I didn't think about that before. I, I, and I know that's a great privilege to just think everybody has a laptop, but maybe um, going forward we can think of ways to include people who don't have access to get onto Zoom or necessarily do the survey. Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, I'm I'm particularly interested in getting some feedback from people who are houseless uh, within Amherst. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we, they interact with the police a lot as I understand it. And I think we really need to know more about how those interactions go and what, what kinds of services and needs would be uh, potentially more beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. um, if we, I think if we write this invitation for bid well, yeah. we will get people uh, sort of laying out how they would go about doing outreach. Uh, so I would suggest we not try to figure out the details of that, you know, going forward until we get, you know, some some bids and suggestions. Absolutely, and I didn't in, intend for this necessarily for us to this be a decision making 
conversation as much as, much as shedding some light on the fact that we have to do these things and keep them uh, above water where we, we see them all the time. And I think that that bid process is going to be exactly what you said, Mr. Vernon Jones, a place where we can we can lock in and get what we want done. Um, Ms. Walker? Um, yeah, I just wanted to also piggyback on what Mr. Vernon Jones said in response to um, Mr. Mrs. Ferreira, I'm sorry, that I think that we can address a lot of those things that we want in the invitation to bid. Um, and so we can just add more language and task those things to whoever we can, whoever we choose to be our consulting group. So we can let them know that we want them because the first part that we're doing is the community engagement aspect. That's the one we decided right. to work on first. So if we task all of these things to the consultant group, then we don't necessarily have to spend that much time on it, but we can still get our hands on that information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Other comments before we move? forward. So this is great. So that item D was actually something I, I put in place and it, it, it may be a moot point at this juncture because it was trying to identify what has to be done um, by whom and, and when kind of thing. And the, the whole notion of the chart was just to put some people to a particular task or to a particular, in this case, we're talking about community folks, but that the off column could be anything. Uh, you know, for example, the pro procurement process, you know, who's leading that, who else is working on it? And, um, you know, what are the, the next steps basically? So I think being able to articulate what we're doing uh, individually and as a group might be useful for us. I'm not sure if this is the exact tool to use, certainly, but uh, especially since we're, we're moving forward with a, a bid process, but it's gonna be incumbent to show some timelines uh, for us between in the next four to four and a half months so that we see where we're going and we know who's taking responsibility for, for what tasks, what reports, what interactions, et cetera. So that was the, the intent of that when I actually had it a while ago. Uh, but I uh, want to hear some comments about uh, how you feel about setting up uh, timelines for us that we can articulate not only to ourselves, but our community. And certainly don't let the, that form throw you off. It's, it's more of an something conceptualizing a, a process rather than an actual form itself. Yeah. Ms. Ferreira. I mean, I think it was just, I think that this is good. And I mean, obviously um, it's something that we need to do just to kind of keep ourselves on task. Um, even though, you know, I, de I do hear Ms. Pat and others in terms of like, obviously, you know, we don't want to take on too, too much in terms of because of our capacity, right, in terms of we're meeting, you know, from week to week, and then we're also meeting with subcommittees, you know, not subcommittees, but like not meeting, but like doing um, subcommittee work, right, through email and through Ms. Moiston and everything. So we're all kind of, you know, busily working throughout the week and then meeting once a week. So we're, we're doing a lot of work. But I guess my question with this would just be, you know, how do you want to do this? Because obviously, you know, we each, I'm sure, could take a couple of these and be the main contacts for them. Um, because I'm sure we're already connected with some of these kind of um, organizations. So we could do that. And then what do you want us to do? Like get information from them? I guess, you know, I, I just a little bit more information in terms of what we would need to do. Like, do we want them to, to answer the survey questions? Is that what we're asking for, I guess, you know, mm. for each group to answer the survey questions? I, I guess that's the guidance that I would need. Yeah, I don't really know. I, and I think I'm just trying to, uh, like, you know, for example, uh, when we were, when I was listening to uh, town council uh, on Monday and also looking at some of the work that the police department does, if you look in that chart, it talks about, you know, members of different sectors of the town. Um, and I just think in terms of, our, you know, if the police department, for example, is interacting and they, they have a group of, 
of that they're interacting with North Sector in some way, with some officer or officers, that'd be important to know. But it also would be important to to know from that sector how they're feeling about you know what's going on in terms of public safety. It'd be important for uh, them to be able to articulate that. And maybe maybe some of those sectors don't have uh, free and easy access to to laptops and to um, you know online meetings and, and the like. So that's where that was coming from. And I, I think, Ms. Ferreira, what I don't want to sort of undercut the efforts of the, uh, the procurement process, because I think this could be in, embedded in that in some way, certainly. But I, I want us to be, uh, us to be clear about who's doing what and, and when. So when we put we put something out like this evening, for example, we have several members working on on this process by Tuesday. Well, that that could be one of those things. Who's working on it? Um, you know, when are they going to have a report? What kind of follow up? Those kinds of things. Not to make extra work, but just to be really clear. So. Thank you, Mr. So in terms of that, I just, you know, again, like I said, that's that's just, you know, follow through. How do we want to do it? How do we want to record it? How do we want to stay ahead of it? So um, if you would like, uh, and if it's helpful in answer to your question, Ms. Ferreira, and, and maybe to help others, is for me to go back, um, think a little bit more about this in light of our discussion tonight with the procurement process and see if I could reframe that in some way that, that fits our current discussion tonight, because this doesn't actually fit it, you know, in the way we talked about it tonight, but I could, I see some need for, certainly for timelines and the like, so. Be happy to pass on some more information for thought. So, uh, yes, Ms. did you have your hand up, Ms. Rara? No, it was just a thumbs up. Oh, I think it froze, so I couldn't tell. Sorry, what I was mean. just saying a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, so let, let's move on then, and I'll, I'll put some notes together for the for the group on that. Uh, the shared and collective experiences and resources. I'm not sure the, who had the entry point for that one, but I don't know if that's related actually to what we spoke about earlier. I think it's kind of what, how how do we collect the information and then how, what do we do with it and how do we process it? Where do we yeah, hold it? Let me ask a question to you, Ms. Moisson. Um, when people suggest re resources for us or they you know, they write letters, or do, do we have something that, and I'm putting this in air quotes, a, a resource bank for us as a group? So I... I'm slowly filtering them in onto the web okay. site under the resources tab. I mean, that's what I so that's ours. signed that for. Mm -hmm. um, but I honestly, I haven't been able to, to do that recently. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vernon Jones? Um, if we're going to put things on the resource tab that people suggest to us, I think it would be important to have a statement there that these are not necessarily resources we are recommending. These are resources that have been identified for our use. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or you guys can decide which resources you would like to have put on the bank. I mean, it's really at your disposal anyway that you would like to do it what you think would be helpful for the community to know. Um, but I, I do agree with, not that it matters, with Russ, Mr. Vernon Jones's statement. Russ, Russ is fine, by the way. I'm, I'm so used to calling you Russ and now I'm calling everybody by their last name, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Blame it on me, that's me. <laughs> So I, let me just, I, I, I like what you're offering, uh, Russ. <laughs> I, I like what you're offering because I, I, I think, I, I don't, for me, I don't want folks to think that if they send something, 
that that actually is going to be part of uh, our use in making recommendations necessarily. Right. It could be, it where, where yeah. could be, but it depends on um, where we're going with this. The resources for me are not just what, what individuals and groups send in, but we have a lot of internal resources that we've generated. We've participated in webinars and we have information and knowledge gained from that. We've gone to workshops. We're reading articles and those kinds of things. So as we're creating our own library of, of work, those are, those are resources that we have as, in addition to what other people send in. So um, I, I like your comment and I would continue to have people, encourage people to send them to us. Um, if they feel it'd be useful knowing what our, um, our process is all about and knowing what our, our mission is, if they think it might be useful. Other folks? Ms. Bowman has her, her hand up. Okay, uh, I can't see Ms. Bowman on the screen, so it I... Does, yeah. Ms. Bowman? Hi. Uh -huh. um, so the other, the question I have in relation to um, the, uh, the resources that we're getting from people, are we checking those resources for validity or are we just put, are you like, are they just being posted? Ms. Moisten, are you? You mm -hmm. want to take that? So I collect them in, like I have well, multiple community safety working group folders and email in my email. Mm -hmm. And so those get filtered okay. there, but I send them to you. So um, I haven't posted that many. So there's only the few that we already know that are uh, valid. Oh, actually, so uh, I guess the next question would be, what do you guys want me to put as a resource and not? So. Everything is subject to the open meeting law, but that doesn't mean we necessarily oh, okay. have to post it. Um, I or to the I, public I, records I, law. Sorry, no, they need card information, so I don't. Know. We're paying cash. Tell us, Tashina. Oh, it's for sorry. well, me and Tashina. We're paying. Sorry, cash. I'm multitasking here, guys. Sorry. All right, thank you. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. Bye. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> So Everything I, is subject to the public records law, right? Yeah. And But that doesn't mean we have to post everything that's sent to us. So you guys can actually tell me you want this one and not that one, or I don't put any of them on unless directed or... I, I, I think, you know, what we're, what we're doing is fine. I, I, I really don't think we're getting tons and tons of stuff certainly and i think as my own opinion if we're reading these these items that come through we you know we look at them we take a look at them i'm i'm not not sure about going out to validate it necessarily but certainly um reading it and thanking people for it and going forward i i think if at some point if we were going to use something that had data in it, for example, or that was going to be influencing our work, then we certainly have to, uh, we'd have to vet that information to be sure it was, was important. Ms. Pat. So I hear what Mr. Ross um, comments on your comment. Um, the way I'm feeling is that I hope we will not be in a position where policing um, resources that people are submitting to us um, I think that risk, all the resources that we're getting should be posted, but we could identify the ones that the, our group, maybe like having like two different parts. I don't know if that's possible for you, Ms. Uh, Moisten, but I am not comfortable like saying we don't endorse this um, resource or we endorse this one, um, but we can just let it out for people to decide what they want to believe. Um, so we have to be careful not to discourage people, not to send us stuff is where I'm coming from. But we can definitely, I hear Mr. Ross, we can definitely say, you know, th this came from 
the community. This is what our group, you know, agreed to work. I don't know, but I think everything should be out there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for instance, the the email that was sent from oh, I'm so sorry, I don't remember who it was. Um, Ms. Bridget, Ms. Uh, yes, yeah. Ms. Hines. Like no. I wouldn't necessarily put no. that on the on no. there. No, no. But no. perhaps the one that came from Defund Four One Three that has listed all of yeah. their different resources or what came from the League of Women Voters. Those mm -hmm. kinds of items could I I would post. And that would be something we would acknowledge, as we said earlier. Thank the person or group for sending it in. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would share the, uh, in, a, in a CC, the, the response with the group. Let me go from there. I just want to say that Tashina had to um, log off. So I just I left. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wanted to make that announcement. Okay. So, Mr. Ross, did I understand your comment? Or maybe I misunderstood it. Are okay. you saying not to post it? Or if we post it, no, not I'm, to, I'm uh, suggesting we post everything. Oh, good. But okay. Put up some statement that says we aren't necessarily endorsing these. Oh, maybe the word endorsing is what I'm. Uh, I, I I was thinking with. I was thinking a statement. These these are uh, resources that have been identified mm -hmm. by the community for our interest, um, and we make no recommendation or something at this point. Oh, I don't know about recommendation. <laughs> Okay. Right. If you I mean, want to send me the direct language, then that, that would be a good it. idea. That's fine. Okay. Well, we can spend a half an hour something. trying to agree on it. Yeah, let, let, Ms. Yeah. Walker, let me, let me go to Ms. Walker. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think we can just say something like this is a list of resources we have compiled from the community and very simple and not say anything about how we feel about them and just there please. Yeah, there's, there's your language. There it is. Thank you. See, the youngest. Uh, who is the younger? Is that is Darius that is the youngest. Hi, Alicia. I am. Wisdom. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Okay, let's let's move forward. Um, another important piece here: alternative services for the APD, um, with the three bullet points under there to discuss. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well. You know, part of our charge is to decide whether or not to recommend alternative services or alternative ways of meeting some of the needs that the police are currently meeting. Um, I've been sort of assuming that that certainly is something that I want to recommend and I've sort of sensed that we're heading that way. Um, but I didn't I didn't want us to sort of be, have very different assumptions. I, you know, it's like, I, I'm not looking for a decision at this point, mm -hmm. but if a bunch of you are thinking, oh no, we're not, we're not gonna go with alternative services. We're just gonna explore them and then recommend everything stay with the police. Uh, maybe we ought to know that now. Um, but if we have some sort of general sense that yes, we think we are gonna recommend alternative community services, uh, that would be that would be good to know and would kind of inform how we go about the work. Can you put that up again, Miss Marston? The agenda. I'm sorry. As Miss Marston is putting this up, I, I think um, you know what Mr. Vernon Jones is bringing forward is an important mm -hmm. process piece too, because sometimes we we can check in with on um, with each other. You know, certainly not looking for a, dis a decision, but certainly there could be some information shared to give the, the group sentiment, uh, certainly around certain topics. And, you know, I would, you know, you know, not recommend this or that we debate the right or wrong of it, but certainly allow people to give their sense of what they're thinking about in terms of that you know, as we're moving forward, we are gonna be making lots of recommendations. And I'm, I'm sure all of us, because we're human, probably have some preliminary recommendations in mind already, you know, based on what we're doing, but we're not there yet as, as, a, as a working group. So, um, 
you know, Mr. Vernon Jones, by May, you know, just I would welcome folks, you know, responding to, to the question uh, Mr. Vernon Jones is, is posing uh, to, to, to hear your take in this particular moment regarding uh, alternative services. Ms. Owen. I did start investigating alternative services, and honestly, I think I'm very interested in pursuing that in terms of the reform or recommendations that we make, but I can only speak for myself. Um, I did start looking into peer-led organizations and resources for things like homelessness and rehabilitation, but um, trying to translate that into this work. And um, I think the biggest thing would be mental health services mm -hmm. and maybe some of the areas that the APD might not be entirely trained to give that budget to mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Thank you, Ms. 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 Owen. Can, can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having internet issues. It seems like if I stay on too long, it starts getting weird, so. Okay. But anyway. I'm sorry, I couldn't see your, your face. It's like you had your hand up. I apologize. I couldn't see you on screen. So go right ahead. Just to say that I'm in agreement that, you know, I've been thinking about as alternative, um, you know, services, um, especially in the area of like, you know, like uh, education, youth. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, like, you know, like, um, um, police in the in the schools, um, you know, uh, you you know, kind of like how they impact youth and obviously mental health, houselessness. Um, so I'm definitely thinking of that. Obviously, I'm still learning a lot and 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 looking at all the different research and data out there. So I'm not ready at this point to make any definitive decision. But yeah, I'm on that path. Mm -hmm. Miss Pat. I have a lot on my bucket list that I'm not going to bore you guys tonight. They um, having a cultural center, um, programs that will empower youth, just like Ms. Barada said, um, services that will uh, encourage uh, workforce development. Let's face it, some people who get into trouble sometimes, you know, could be issue of um, employment, it could be poverty issue, I like that addressed. Um, the business community. I was looking at the, some of the documents that were sent and I was looking at the businesses that the town uh, uh, contract with. I couldn't recognize any backwork business, but I have to look again. And that is distressing to me. So I'm, I'm looking at economic development for BIPOC community in this town. Mm -hmm. um, any, Ms. B uh, Ms. Owen. Ms. Pat, I'm glad that you brought that up at the council meetings. Um, I want to, I believe it was one of the council members suggested us doing outreach through BIPOC owned businesses in Amherst. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really, I couldn't find online like any website or link through the town site that really separates businesses owned by BIPOC folks. So it was really tough for me. And I guess I'm curious, I would, I mean, Mr. Bachelman's not here, but I'm interested to know what the town of Amherst does for black owned businesses. Not much. I looked at the list. I mean, that's my, one of my lens, my perspective when we're doing this work really into, it's all about, you know, some of it is about economics, you know, um, I, I mean, I can help with the list of uh, BIPOC, not, not all, but I can, up with that list a little bit because I, I especially with black owned businesses I mean you know close com, uh, con, uh, con, communication with uh, some of the black owned businesses in town mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you so uh, Mr. Cage uh, Ms. Walker uh, any comments on this? I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to respond to Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, Mr. Cage. Um, yeah, I obviously um, 
I want to say that I'm definitely going the direction of um, a different a different way of policing Amherst. Um, I think that's like, if we didn't try to change how we were doing things in Amherst, I don't think this this working group would really be like making a make a difference if we weren't going to change that. And um, I don't want to like make anything sense known right now, but I'm definitely in the direction of different ways we can handle policing in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Walker. Um, I also agree that um, I think I'm de definitely leaning towards thinking about what different recommendations we can make. Um, I haven't specifically started looking at anything yet, but definitely know that I'd be looking in the direction of things for like youth services or youth engagement in the town um, and then more preventative measures because I think we use policing right now as like a response to things and we need to look more at like services for homelessness prevention and businesses and and just stuff like that um, as opposed to just reforming the police current police services mm -hmm. Ms. Owen one last thing on my end, I think um, as we move towards investigating different alternatives, um, we should research into ways that we can support BIPOC families. I think that's a huge issue. I think DCF definitely polices um, BIPOC families and there's a lack of support for them in this community. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Thank you, thank you. Vernon Jones. I just wanted to note that for me, having alternative service providers is not just the police not being trained or not being specialists. Some of it is their son, no matter how skillful they were and uh, thoroughly trained, I still wouldn't want somebody in a uniform and a gun showing up to provide that service for, for a lot of folks. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just about how the police currently you know, are or are not trained or do or not, or don't do it well. It's about what's appropriate to have a, uh, an armed officer of the, the town as opposed to um, somebody who's more um, oriented toward, uh, you know, strictly service. Mm -hmm. Ms. Walker, you had your hand up again. Um, no, I just wanted to strongly emphasize what Ms. Owen said. I thought she brought up a really good point um, and that families would be a very important place to start. Well, if I may just add to what everyone else is saying, um, when, when, I, when I heard the, the phrase alternative services, right, it makes me think about um, what kind of a, available possibilities might we have to address some of the very serious needs for safety uh, across the board, uh, starting with the police department in, um, in this community. So, you know, we're looking at other possibilities rather than the current possibles that we have um, to, to further extend the work of safety, um, especially around issues with BIPOC families, et cetera in our community. So yeah, alternative, certainly. I'm thinking about it and how we could best impact the, uh, you know, the community in a positive way. Mr. I Wilson. mean, I, yeah, I mean, I look at employment, town employment. I don't see too many, you know, BIPOC people um, with the huge budget we have in our nest, it's not reaching BIPOC community. So that resources needs to be needs to be distributed evenly. Right now it's not. Mm -hmm. Ms. Morrison, did you have a hand up? I just wanted to chime in and, and say that I agree, but we also have a new core equity team that I'm a uh, co-chair of that is dealing with that exact issue with the human resources department, which I'm also part of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just an FYI, and as well as different ways to make the town buildings and facilities more inclusive mm -hmm. and welcoming. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Do you guys post your your meetings? Um, no, and no. We're, we're we've just really started to begin, and so I um, 
I think one of the things that we're working on is, is getting everyone trained for just some simple anti-racist work, um, starting from the top down. So, okay. so we're working there, yeah. So this is a town employee subgroup. Is that what it is? It's a town employee group. Gotcha, oh, okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. okay. So I'd like to circle back and maybe maybe close, Mr. Vernon Jones. Are, are we getting? Are you getting the kind of sentiment feedback or sort of? Absolutely, that's group? the kind of straw. It's kind of where I assumed we were, but it seemed yeah. good to be I, we something we didn't have to keep dancing around. Um, and at some point, pretty soon, it seemed like we ought to be. Um, answering those other two questions about what's the information we need to sort of back up the fact that we're making this recommendation and then what's the information we need to figure out how we would provide um, if we're going to take some things away from the police how we would provide those um, mm -hmm. and I hope we because that's all part of phase one I hope we don't wait too mm -hmm. long on sort of identifying some of those things. I'm not suggesting we have that discussion mm -hmm. tonight, but mm -hmm. there, there might be some things you'd want us to submit in writing over time. Certainly, and, uh, and I'm you know, very happy to, that you brought it up. I, I think um, you know, it's nice not to go too far forward without, make, without mm -hmm. sort of filling in the gaps of our own thinking <laughs> along the way and uh, assuming the wrong thing all the way down the road. But um, I think this is very useful and very helpful. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, so let's see. Ms. Owen and I went to a town council meeting the other night. And I guess what I wanted to say about that was I, Excuse me, Paul, I just noticed that uh, Deborah has her hand up. Oh, no, that, that was just the leftover. I can't get it out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to click on it. Can you, you should be able to take it down. I know, right? Yeah. There right. We go. There we go. I thought it was, <laughs> that hand was frozen a long time ago. It's, I know, right? Sorry. Yeah. Hey, your arm, your arm gets tired, tired when you hold it up too long. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks. Um... Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we we had, uh, attended and presented at, at the, the the meeting on Monday, and I guess just I, I want to say I was happy to be able to participate with uh, Ms. Owen in representing the CSWG and and making our presentation, and just just to say I'm uh, glad we were heard, and um, that. Uh, glad to hear that there was going to be some follow-up by the uh, the town council in terms of what we uh, read together at the at the town the town meeting. So just wanted to acknowledge that, and glad we had the opportunity to to express our views in a very public way. Ms. Owen, um, comments, please. I agree. I was happy to be there. I think going forward, I'm not sure with it, if it's within the reach of our group, but it opened my eyes to how little diversity there is on the town council. And I hope um, it's an, for me, it's a huge moment for me to realize like, okay, I need to be more involved um, in voting and all of that. So part of one Mom of the for things. Election. Hang on, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ms. Moisty. So part of one of the things I do as a community participation officer is trying to engage um, groups that we or people that we don't usually hear from, right? So that they can be aware of these things. And you know, a lot of folks don't necessarily vote in in the local elections. And so to get them more involved and so that they are aware that there's not a reflection of what is outside when you walk around. Um, so I appreciate that comment and um, that if anybody has any ideas, that would be great for me as a community participation officer to share those with me. No, it was definitely a really eye-opening experience and I definitely look forward to trying to be more involved and to stand behind people um, more like me and people who don't usually get a seat at the table to have one. I think part of dismantling white supremacy is um, 
for white people in power to take a step back when that representation already exists for them there, but maybe not for others. Mm -hmm. Ms. Walker? Um, I just wanted to thank you guys. I think uh, Ms. Owen and Mr. Wiley, I think you guys did an amazing job. Um, I did attend the town council meeting and I watched the whole thing and I just wanted to thank you guys for representing us very well. And you're, you're welcome. And let me just say, and, and be very candid about this, um, your, your work and others and helping us frame our, our thinking around the letter and uh, collecting the, the input from the group and are clearly hearing the group well, Ms. Walker, um, was en enabled us to present in the way we did. So just want to publicly thank you for, for your input and others who else was working on that besides me. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that uh, uh, Mr. Cage, you know, I, I this, this is the kind of work we need to do. So I wanna make sure I acknowledge that publicly and, and thank you for your work and helping us make a, a very important statement. Ms. Pat. So I wanna um, agree with what Ms. Walker said. Um, I really thank both of you and all the people that worked on the project. I attended the, um, the, the council meeting on Monday and I was very pleased of how both of you presented and handled yourself. And this shows your leadership. And I'm very grateful that I'm in a group that, you know, we're working as a team. And I know this subject wasn't easy for any of us, but we're able to pull it through. And I, you know, I'm, I'm really, really pleased. Thank you. Well, strong work on everybody's part. Thanks again. I think Deb, uh, Ms. Ferreira has her hand up. And you also she call does. me Deborah too. You can, you can call me Deborah. I don't have an issue with it. Um, so I, I I guess one of the things I was not I was not the meeting. Um, so I guess I did want to get like a little bit of a just a quick little brief summary in terms of because you all said it was well received. What did that mean? Because I know obviously we were sending a very strong message to uh, uh, you know the town council and a specific town council member and stuff. So so I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of a sense of that. And then for me, I mean, I do have to say, I mean, I saw the message that was read to them, but I, I had seen a, a other iteration of it, which was shorter and kind of like more to the point. So I guess I kind of like liked the other one better, which was kind of just focused, you know, kind of, you know, I had included one thing about white supremacy uh, history of this country, um, but that wasn't in the final cut. So, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of get a sense of, you know, why did we feel we had to go into more explanation of everything? Well, if, if I may start, first of all, and I, and I, I did apologize to the group because sometimes when, you know, as we're, we do this work um, for myself, I, I work parallel with what's going on. So what you saw earlier was actually something I was writing on my own to give some feedback to uh, you know, Ms. Walker and others who were working to, to lead that and actually sent it out in a, in a way that preempted the, you know, the, the person who was leading it. So um, when, I, you know, when I saw the second message, I said, no, we're, that's, that's what we actually needed, I thought. And I, I think there was a depth of, of material in the second letter, while the, the first one was just, my, my own thinking around it, but the, the second one, which you ultimately, ultimately used, uh, provided a very rich context for our, our experiences, uh, more so than the first one. And I think it had a, a, a depth to it that that was able to resonate with the town council. And I, I so that's where we went. And I, um, in terms of what you're asking, how it was received and, you know, Ms. Owen, you know, you know, please chime in, but there was um, uh, the, the letter was, was welcomed and um, expected by the chair. And um, we, we brought it forward and the response was very quick. And uh, the follow-up is, is imminent. So I, I think we, 
we, we came, we went into it expecting to be heard. We were heard and, and now they continue to, to follow up. So I, you know, I think it was just well well done all the way around in terms of them and us. So Ms. Owen, I don't know if you want to add to that. Um, I thought it was well received to a certain extent. I did notice like while we were going through our presentation and everything that there was a guy who had like muted his, who was on the council, who had like muted his screen, but answered a phone call. And I honestly, like, I'm one of those people who when I'm presenting something or when I'm really passionate about something, and you all probably know this by now, I like start to turn red. And when I looked in the audience and I saw him answering a phone call on mute, it, like, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> um, I thought that the other people that were there were respectful of it and welcomed it though. And I'm glad that we had a chance to read the letter, but I did notice that person answer their phone, which did feel really disrespectful. So when I read the email from Dr. Bridget Hines, it kind of all clicked because she had mentioned um, the budget approval at a council meeting, including somebody putting foot cream on and answering a phone call as well. And it just makes this work kind of feel like it's going on the back burner. Well, I, I think th things like that, unfortunately, do happen, and you know, they 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 do send messages of different types to to, to folks. And you know, my only uh, encouragement would be to continue to to press through these things and comment them, comment on them as you are, and continue to press forward. Um, there are going to be a lot of behaviors and a lot of responses that are going to totally flip people <laughs> at times and others that aren't. And I, I think as, as long as we feel we're coming from a strong point, valid point, uh, a point that is justified, then I think the, the message ultimately overrides. And I think that's what was heard by the chair. I, I think the chair understood that we had to make this, this message. So um, that's where I, I thought it, it was strong, but I, I noticed that that too as well. And uh, anyway, Ms. Pat. So um, are we going to be apologizing to BIPOC community, is that correct? We said we would. Okay, so we're still doing that, correct? Yes. I think we should. Yes. Does someone want to volunteer to start a draft response to the, okay. the statement on that, Ms. Walker? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, I mean, I would volunteer to start a draft if um, need be, but I just wanted to add that I, I hope that you guys didn't mind that I added that in there because there wasn't really time to confer with the group. We didn't have another meeting before that, that this was presented to the town council, but I felt like that was our ob obligation that if we would be asking them to issue an apology that we should also apologize for the things that we, um, that we could have done better. Personally, I didn't have any issue with that. I think it's the right thing to do. I don't know, I can't speak for other people. I don't have any, any issue with it. In fact, I think just acknowledging all around that this process and again, this is, um, you know, when I get back to talking about things about after action reviews, like here's, you know, after this, you know, what do we learn from this? this might, that may be a learning right there. And I, and I think for us to be able to articulate that to our community, that we're not just static and running through meetings, but that we're a learning community as well, that um, that's working on behalf of the community, then I think we're, we're in good shape. So, uh, and um uh, I, I hope something like this, you know, energizes us in a way that, that keeps us on track and moves us forward. So that's my thought. Anyone else, Ms. Moisty? I just wanted to say, Ms. Ferreira, um, the, the meeting is online on the council's page. If you wanted to, to, to review it, you can kind of just fast forward it until it gets to the part of the community safety working group, if you would Thank like you. to. Thank mm -hmm. Thank or you I can all. send you the link because it, it sometimes it's a little difficult to. Mm -hmm. Thank you all again. Yeah, if you could send me the link, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're meeting tonight, so after this, you can join them. <laughs> See what's up. Anyway, uh, thank, you thank you to you both though for 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 going and representing us though. Appreciate that.
Miss Owen and Miss Walker, you both of you should run for election. Come on. Run for election. You should. We need yeah. diversity. Come on. That was a resounding a response to your challenge. They are laughing. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing. Did oh, they're put, thinking. They're did thinking. I put you guys yeah, on, on the spot? They're thinking. <laughs> Let's move on, please. Uh, so thank you all again for su supporting our work. Thank you, Ms. Owen, for joining uh, me on that. And um, it's great to have you shared that, that long letter. I'm glad you said that, too. You said it. Too. Maybe I could read the half of it. That was so good. <laughs> thank that was you. good. Anyway. Um, Response to emails sent to the working group. I think we discussed that already. Yeah. So we're good there. That's fine. And then timing of agenda items. Yep. Someone submitted that in um, just to see if possibly to ensure that the meetings get over a little more timely. I know it's kind of hard because we only meet once a week, but um, some of the other committees have a, a timed frame around their different agenda items that they keep to so that the meeting um, flows properly and stays within the time frame or closer to the time frame. Okay. All right. That would be great because uh, we our conversations do uh, extend themselves sometimes and not and because I think they're important. So but I think there's a, a fine balance between going too long and um, making sure everybody is heard kind of thing. Any comments about that? I mean, we could try to, uh, at the, you know, our next meeting, try to, uh, you know, make sure we stay on that two hour target. And if need be, I'd be happy to be a little more directive in terms of how to manage the time. I also think that it would be helpful if, if I may, Mr. Vernon Jones, I'm sorry, if we, just if we have some way of uh, feeding these agenda items uh, so that we're not inundated with a, a number of different things that, that take us all over the board, but if there's a way to organize the agenda items into categories even so that, you know, anyway, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I was just trying to understand, was the suggestion in here that we ask the chair to plan a time budget specifying a number of minutes for each item or was that not what was proposed? Ms. Walker? Um, I did not propose this item so I just wanted to make that clear but my interpretation or of how this could be useful um, because I mean I am happy to stay if we go over I understand this is important work and we don't have a lot of time to meet so I'm happy to make that accommodation. Um, but I do have children who are waiting for me to get off my meeting every night. So when we do, it would be also helpful for us to end at 7.30 so I could um, attend to their routine. So if we could have like a general, we would hope that this, that each agenda point would take this much time and then try to stick to that as best as possible, but keeping in mind that fluctuation is necessary. Um, but like say we need, you know, 20 minutes for this agenda point. And if it takes 30, that's okay. But if it takes, if we're pushing 30, we should acknowledge that we should wrap it up at that point. Thank you. Other comments? Well, I'd be, you know, I'm, I'm with you, Ms. Walker. I, I don't have little children waiting for me um, at 7.30, um, but uh, that's typically my dinner time on these meeting nights. So. Uh, not to personalize it in that way, but I, I do see that there might be some ways to better manage those meetings. And I, I, I think we have, we have some items that are informational, for example, that we're just sharing information. We have some items that are for discussion and we, you know, similar to what Mr. Vernon Jones presented this evening. And there's some items that maybe we need a decision on. So, you know, that's one way to think about putting them, lumping them together and say, these are discussion items, these are informational, these are, and, you know, maybe the discussion things last a little bit longer than the informational or some of the things that we know are, are we're going to be voting on. We would think about that early and, you know, work toward uh, a vote or an approval. 
So that's, that's just one way to think about it. I don't know if other people have comments. Ms. Pat? One suggestion is maybe for us, uh, for the chair to think about rearranging the agenda items like um, group members report, maybe it could be the last one. And then we get the new agendas discussed first. Okay. We could try that, Ms. Moisten, yes. Yep, so typically I think it's, you just kind of try to, to put a time so you know public comment you have to give so much time to in theory that somebody from the that there's so many people from the public so i know like the human rights commission designates 15 minutes but we rarely ever use that but what it does is so that it, it just makes you more mindful of like we say hypothetically we'll talk 15 minutes about a you know item a under discussions but by the time that you're done that everything fits within that hour and a half time frame so or that you have some some wiggle room if you extend outside of that hour and a half time frame. And one other thing that would help too, and, and I'd be happy to, to work on this and you know share it with folks, but, and, and I'm one of the biggest culprits, let me be straight about that. I will think about an agenda item about 37 seconds before Ms. Moisson has to post it. And then it's, you know, and I miss them sometimes. so. Uh, and again, I don't want to be, you know, the only one putting agenda items in there so we can get those in early enough and they're all sitting there, then it's easier to uh, frame some time around these things and understand what, what's going to take longer and what might take a little shorter bit of time. And then we can negotiate our way through a meeting better that way. So just a thought and an encouragement, by the way. Okay. So, anything else before we go to upcoming events, Mr. Vernon Jones? I don't know. Is this unexpected items? Uh, up, upcoming events. Is, is there is there a time for unplanned items after that? I'm not yeah. looking at the agenda. Okay, I'll yeah. wait. Okay. Mine's very brief. Any upcoming events? If there are mine, is, mine, is, mine is question for the town, Ms. Moisten. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm assuming the town is planning a Black History Month. Yep. Is it? Ms. Moisten. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want I'm wondering if you've done some outreach to the community if there is if there are any other groups planning uh, Black History Month. That way that could be coordination. Just my suggestion. Yeah, um, so the HRC kind of has designed some of it. And so I know we're working with some of the kids from POKU. Um, so we've coordinated with them. And I've been in touch with Mr. Shabazz, Mr. Dr. Shabazz. Um, but I haven't necessarily reached out to anybody else because um, in the past, I haven't really known about other groups that were doing a celebration for, for Black History Month. Um, last year, I tried to connect with people for the Lunar New Year, but that didn't work out. Um, I do try to connect with the community for Kwanzaa. It's particularly if I know that the community itself has its own already established group of, or people that promote that. So like Juneteenth, there was already a Juneteenth committee. So I try to work with them. There was already a committee that does the reading of Frederick Douglass's um, mm. Uh, speech. So I try to work with them to pr help promote those so that I'm not taking from anybody necessarily. Um, so I haven't sent out my email because I, I keep trying to, but I haven't sent out the email yet in to, to capture for Black History Month because this year with this, um, Black History Month theme is the Black family, which is representation, identity, and diversity. So what I would like to do is have... Um, several community members submit photos of their family, folks who identify themselves as black households. And so turn that into some type of film so that we can promote it at an event. Um, the Human Rights Commission will also be, uh, I'll, we will also be posting a local and a worldwide uh, black heroine each day 
through the month of February. We won't have a public flag raising this year, but I will film when they raise the flag. They still will raise the flag on the first and I will film it and we will show it during the uh, Black History Month event, which I think will be on the 13th because I'm told sixth is Bob Marley's birthday and they are having a separate event for Bob Marley's. Oh, nice. Um, uh, at the mill district. So I don't, again, I, you know, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So I try to be conscious of those things. I do. I am aware, and uh, I'm not speaking for the group, but I'm aware that the repar reparation for Amest, Amest is uh, working on something about Black History Month. But I'm but, not speaking mm -hmm. for the group. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, sometimes I, I will reach out to them with that being said, but also sometimes I'm like the more people that are hosting these events around different cultural uh, celebrations, the better, the more the community listens or the more the community sees it. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I will reach out to them again. So the, the ninth, we're still having the Lunar New Year celebration. Um, so that I'm very excited about that. That's the first year that we've had a proclamation for the Lunar New Year mm -hmm. and we'll be hosting an event and this will be the second year for Black History Month celebration. So yeah, I just have to add one more thing under the other items and that is, have you guys decided what you would like for the ninth person for the committee? Like if there's a special skill set or for the ninth member of the committee? We haven't decided that yet. No. Can we send it to you? Can we email you? Suggestions, yep. And then we can talk about them at the next meeting. Yeah, let's do that then. Thank you, um, Ms. Moisson, for that work on Black History Month. Thanks for the question. Thank Ms. you. Yeah. And um, we already established our next meeting date, including uh, a subcommittee uh, meeting on Tuesday. So that's already set for uh, next Wednesday and Tuesday, respectively. Whole group meeting, uh, subcommittee meeting. Other topics, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, very briefly. I realize that we've been talking about the first phase as being about alternative community services. But the first phase is also the things with budget implications. Um, and if, in fact, we want our police department to have more anti-racist, implicit bias uh, training, uh, we probably need to make a recommendation uh, about that as part of phase one and not wait to phase two because it has budget implications. Now, there's a whole issue in the defund community about not increasing the budget even for training. Uh, but if we want training, it seems like we ought to be talking about that. Uh, before our first report uh, because of its budget implications. Um, would, the, would the group welcome putting that, that discussion on the next, uh, next meeting on Wednesday? The timing of that I, I, is, is extremely important, by the way. Ms. Uh, Walker, uh, yeah. Ms. Walker and then Ms. Pereira. Sorry. Yeah, um, yes, I'm okay with adding that to the agenda. I think that's very important, but I am wondering though if that's gonna affect the work that we're doing for the IFB. Is Anthony still on? I don't know, I don't, I don't know if he is or not. We're, we're talking about- Oh, he is. Oh, he is? Are we talking mm -hmm. about the next budget? We're talking about the next budget. We're not talking about the current budget. Right, but I, um, I guess what I mean is that if those were things that we needed to address with our first report and we had decided that we were gonna split the invitation to bid to do, then that might be something that we would need to address in the first um, IFB rather than the second, which means Russ, Pat, and I would need to be talking about that within the next couple of days before our next meeting. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Pat. Well, I guess I'm I'm confused a little bit about that. I guess I want to hear more from Mr. Vernon Jones about it because, I mean, I, I think uh, um, us going down the road of recommending alternative services, that's all going to be impacting the budget, you know, in terms of the police and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, me at this point, I'm not sure yet what I want to do in terms of increasing 
you know, in terms of budget for training or whatever, I mean, that's still all up in the air. Mm -hmm. That's all going to be when, when we're talking about alternative services and things that we're going to be doing around the place. That's all that's all going to impact budget, their budget. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pat, you had your hand up and then I see Mr. Delaney's back somewhere there. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Pat, and then I'd like to, Ms. Morrison, if you could welcome Mr. Delaney back in after Ms. Pat. I mean, I, I, I hear what Mr. Ross is saying, but the way I'm looking at alternative um, services, I'm not thinking about, you know, training for the police. <laughs> it's not, you know, where I'm looking at. When I'm thinking about alternative services. So I see that as the second phase. Um, the B the B and D project is the way I look at it. Okay, um, Mr. Lenny, are you there? I see him. I see him on the screen there, Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. Let me go to you real quick. Um, I'd always thought of the training thing as part of the second phase, um, but if we don't get it into the budget proposals during the first phase, it will be another full year before uh, any recommendation we have can have any impact. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that we need consultant help with that. Uh, I think it's, but, but maybe our subcommittee can talk about that. Okay, let's let the subcommittee uh, flash it. Maybe I'm thinking differently. I mean, personnel training budget, it's personnel training budget, I would think. I don't know. Ms. Maybe Walker. the subcommittee. Yeah. Ms. Pat. Um, I also agree with Ms. Pat, though. I, I don't, I mean, my idea was not to look at the budget in terms of police training, especially mm -hmm. when talking about alternative services. But I'm still just saying that in terms of if that's the information we need to find out and quicker because of a deadline for it to be able to inform the budget for next year before we miss that deadline, then that should be something we look at for the first IFB. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I just wanna say like, I think the subcommittee should just kind of look at that, flush that out a little bit more and then, you know, get back just cause it's eight, almost 820. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, my brain is starting to fry. Well, mine is fried already. <laughs> so, so basically I guess where I'm coming from is that uh, some of the webinar that I, you know, listen to this week, one of the things they're saying is that police training doesn't improve racial disparity, no amount of police training. They're suggesting not to focus too much on that, that it has not shown any improvement. The same thing as diversity, uh, having more of BIPOC uh, police officers will not necessarily, it's not changing anything, it's been tried. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Well, let's let's move this to to the uh, this the subcommittee and then uh, bring it forward again on Wednesday, um, and have a fuller uh, conversation about it. Um, okay. Okay. Let me. Let's, I'll just leave it like that. I think at this point. Yeah. Um, any other <laughs> hands there? I can't see any others. Um, it's 820. It is 820 and it's time to get a motion to adjourn. So move. 20. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Second dead. Okay, all in favor? Everybody. <laughs> Kiss those kids, Miss Walker. <laughs> Thank good you night, all. everyone. Thank you, Mr. Cage. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Get your homework done. Yeah, Darius. Go do your homework. Thank you, man. Take care.